Yeah. We're live yet. We are. We're live. Yay! Hooray! Welcome back to another Beaver Dreams. I am joined this month by Alex. Yay! And Nancy Elizabeth. Hi! And I'm Christine, and Dee might join us later. Yay! So this month, we are talking about Cresley Cole's books, Poison Princess and... What's the name of the other one? Oh my god, I don't oh. even know. <laughs> I don't remember. Shadow's Claim. That's right, Shadow's, Shadow's Claim. Claim. I okay. have it here. One second, I'm just going to get my other book. I realize I left it on the table. <laughs> Do I have the cover? No, I don't have the cover. Wait. Library. Okay, and now that we're live, I'm going to put up our YouTube link. <laughs> Okay. So, which so books did we want to start with this month? The main or the alt? It's up to you, but look at this uh, guy. He's pretty shirtless. He looks pretty well, intense, too. too. He's pretty intense. Pretty intense. I don't mind I don't talking, mind about, talking about, about either. either. Um, we're basically two for two, right? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and since Dee's not here yet, why don't we start with the main? Okay, okay sure. sure. So I will just have questions then, being that I did not read Shadow's Claim. Uh, I got sent to me by Dee uh, in ebook format, like, about a week ago, but I had Anime North this weekend. Oh, uh, yes? How was that? It was fantastic. We had four really great shows, five really great shows, well, no, four really great shows and one show that I thought kind of tanked. But we didn't have any sound, and it was like a last-minute addition to the schedule. So, uh, I've only had I've been there like I haven't been there in two years, but I used to go every year. So I'm sad I only met you after that. That's okay. I wasn't a part of the 404s when you had been there last. That was the year I auditioned. Ah. So. I was always a cosplay masquerade. Nice. Yes. I'll be doing Otaku Thon too, though. Sweet. Sweet. Hope to, so hope to, so hope to see you there. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm echoing. echoing. So, so, it's weird. I think I am too. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, hearing the echoes, hearing Alex? Alex? No, actually, crazy? everything's crazy. clear. Everything's clear on my end. What's oh. going on? Oh, whatever. You're, Deal with it. You're having you, focus you, issues with your camera. I'm not sure why. Which one of us? Uh. Christine, you are your 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 camera seems to be zooming in and out. It's set bit. to auto, and I think yours is doing the same thing. Mine. <laughs> Stupid Google! <laughs> I'm just blaming Google. Well, to go back to the book. That's a good plan. Uh, yes. What uh, are your general thoughts on them both first? On Shadow's, Shadow's claim. claim. Shadow's, Shadow's claim, claim. I didn't finish, I didn't finish it. it. But um, I really didn't like the main character, and that made me sad. Bettina or whatever her name is? Bettina, yes. But one prop I do give to the book, it had a very good opening line. I'll read it to you now. A savage kick to Princess Bettina of Abandon's back severed her spinal cord. So right away you're like, whoa, what's going on? This sounds really terrible. It's just a... So I thought it, w it really intrigued me, and I thought that was kind of neat, and I'm like, oh, this girl's getting hor horribly beat up. And uh, it was kind of depressing at first, but you're like, she's going to make her way out of this. And she never really does. Men do it for her, which kind of bugs me. Oh. Yeah. So to summarize as much as I read, it's this princess from a demon realm, and she's, she's half-breed. Okay. She's half-demon and half-sorceress. Oh, so, yeah. Dee was saying that at the park. Yeah, so she doesn't belong in any world. And she's feeling kind of out of place. So she goes she to the mortal, to the world, mortal world, world to go to university. And there she gets uh, ambushed by a bunch of... Um, I don't remember the name, but Valk Valkyrie or something. Yeah, I don't remember... Yeah, she gets horribly beat up, and it kind of ruins her life, understandably. She's very, she loses her power, she gets really depressed, she gets really shrunken in, and she decides, she kind of, her godparents, because she's an orphan, say, okay, we're going to go, because you were such, 
badly bitten, badly beaten. Uh, we're gonna hold a, a contest to find the strongest warrior, and he will become your husband, and you'll never be in trouble again. That kind of sounds lame for her part. It did, it did. And I thought maybe she'd rise to the occasion and maybe fight for herself or something. But then again, I didn't read the last ten percent, so maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe you can give some insight, Alex. Does she, if she, does she become a heroine? Um. She gets better, <laughs> slightly. <laughs> is it is it is that part of a series though? Like, do you think perhaps? Yeah, it is part of a series. So she and has the chance to get better over the series. Yeah, it is. It is part of a series, and it's actually part of a. It, it, and this series is part of a greater series, from what I understood from the uh, from the hangout uh, last night from Vagal. Oh last right. Night. They, yeah, I think um, there was another series first, and this is like the sequel series. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of the the um, I guess the 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 spin-off series or something that they, yeah, they in the introduced. Same world. They introduced the the uh, shadowy vampires as a sub character in the main world, or that's what she did, and then she made this whole new series specifically about the shadowy vampires or this one shadowy vampire, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So that's where so this and this is the first book of that series. From what I understood, mm -hmm. um, she does like. Um, what part? Like, what point did you get to? Where's your ten percent left? Has he? F okay, like, I has the battle ended. Uh, no, literally, I'm at the part, uh, the f semi-final where they were all present. It was ladies' choice, and they all had to present gifts. Oh, okay. Okay. And I thought that was the first compelling part, except that she chose the stupid. F ah, anyway, she chose. The what, did, what did she cho choose? Okay, so uh, there's six guys left for this competition to be her husband, and there were originally like 250. So a lot of people have died. And there's yeah, there's her best friend who's in like he doesn't really love her, but he's kind of about to be he's assassinated. A he's a man whore. <laughs> But he's her best friend, and he's like, okay, I'm uh, going to get assassinated because I did something stupid. So I'm going to join this competition because what weather way to give my life than helping my best friend. So good for him. And she likes him, so it works out. Meanwhile, there's this other guy who's a vampire, and vampires are apparently only attracted to their one bride in the world. So they're actually incapable of having sex until they meet their bride. And when they meet their bride, it could be anyone. Apparently, it doesn't have to be. It can be of any race, anyone. And suddenly, their heart starts beating, and they're able to have erections again. <laughs> okay. So this one makes it kind of an awkward love story. Well, considering that it started with like 250 men, and how detailed I've heard the sex scenes were, um, was it just like a major bloodbath, and was it really gory as well? It was a little was gory, gory, but what really, what upset, really upset me was the sex the was semi-non-consensual. Semi? -non -consensual. semi? <laughs> In a lot <laughs> so of ways, it was non-consensual so completely. So you're saying it wasn't rape, it was rapey? It was rapey, yeah. It was kind of like, he's like, she thought, the first time, the only three scenes I've read, the first time she thought he was the best friend, because she was super drunk. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, come to me, I love you. And he's like, it's my bride. She wants me. But she had no idea who he was. So I'm like, uh, -uh kind of date rapey. Yeah, and to specify it a little bit more, because they talked about it a little bit in the Hangout, but they didn't actually talk about the reasoning behind it. Because she's a half-breed and because she's mostly sorceress, she has no night vision, unlike the rest of the demons in the realm. True. So she's in complete darkness and drunk, <laughs> laying in bed naked, waiting for her best friend to come back from his night adventures, and this oh, vampire no. comes into the room who can see her perfectly fine, but she can't see him. So she just sees this tall, dark, and brooding shape, assumes it's her best friend who's come back to, you know, to, uh, to be her. with her. But it turns out to be the vampire, and so she just goes through with it, assuming it's him, until she realizes it's not, and then freaks out. That sounds kind of like Shakespearean mistaken identities. With a lot of sex. Yeah, or With extra very sex. Very detailed sex, extra. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was the one upsetting thing. I think, am I a real girl for only finding it nice if the characters like each other? Um, 
I, I don't know what you mean by that question. I, I'm really, afraid. Cause... I'm afraid Bonnie would hate me for saying this, but it's like I don't find the sex sexual unless the characters have a relationship. I have to agree. Mm, I know what you're saying. So I'm hearing this, and I'm like, oh. I don't find the sex romantic for sure, unless it's unless it's like consensual and they're having a relationship. If if it's happening to them, I guess it would read as rape to me, and it would make me really uncomfortable. But it would probably still be sexual. Yeah, sex. I guess yes, yeah, sexual definitely. But uh, what was another scene? Um, he he kind of always says he wants to claim her, like it's his bride, but he he wants to possess her, and that always bugged me every time he said that. He's like, "You will be mine because fate said I don't even know you, but you're mine, so deal with it." So would you put that with the Elsa thing, or would you compare that more to Jacob in Twilight when he <laughs> is in love with the little baby? Oh, that's creepy. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would compare it I to that. I don't know Twilight. I've never watched, never read, so I can't make the comparison. I've only but read them. I'm thinking, I'm thinking compare, it to, uh, compare it to, like, 1960s black and white vampire movies where, you know, you will be my bride and get stolen out of the, you know, the bedroom at night by the vampire because she has no will of her own and he's going to possess her. See, but now I want it to be, like, a really funny melodrama. <laughs> It, I was laughing. Really, I mean, he refers to her almost the whole way through as my bride or mine or, you know, literally like calling her a possession throughout the entire book. I mean, he only actually uses her name three times or four times throughout yep. the entire book. The rest of the time he's referring to her as a possession. How many pages would you say it was? The book? Yeah. Uh, I have a digital copy, so I don't know. It's like 400-ish. Okay, so, yeah, three times? Yeah, Seriously? three or four times I think he actually refers to her by name. How, and he makes up a nickname. How soon does she show up in, the, or does he show up in the book? Pretty Chapter early. Two. Yeah. Chapter okay, two about. so in all that, yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so it was entertaining, but my feminism inside was like, nah. No, you shouldn't say this to a lady. No, and no. and I also wanted her to like to be anti-feminist. I'm like, I want her to grow some balls. She was always yeah. she was very hurt by her attack, which I understand, which I understand. and I thought that made her very sympathetic in the beginning. But then she never rose above it. I found. Yeah, I was gonna say she never grew past it throughout basically the entire book, and it kept requiring force of will from other people to get her to see anything past her own fears and insecurities. Okay. I, I compared it to Poison Study a bit because I, I was complaining about it to a friend and she's like, oh, you only like kick-ass females. I'm like, no, I like females that have been beaten down and then rise up. That's amazing. But this girl, she doesn't rise up. She just kind of like goes medium and has a guy drag she, her a bit. She does rise up. Mm -hmm. But it's in that last 10% that you haven't read yet. Okay. And again, it's kind of force of will in that she basically becomes, she's forced to be her own person because all the people who are supporting her and dragging her through life basically walk away from her and leave her to deal with her own life on her own. So she's forced to become a better person through that. And so she does. Nancy, but, did you read Sarantha Jacks? No, what was that? Did, did you read Grim Space? Last no. year when we read, when the main book was the Linnea Sinclair Gabriel's Ghost, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the alt was Grim Space. And if you like a character that starts really beaten and rises up, you would really love the main protagonist. From Grim Space? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah it's a really good that, series. I'm reading the final book right now. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I'm going to take a note. Um, okay, here's a weird question for you, Alex. Yep. Uh, so you, since you're our only male perspective... Uh, in Beaver Dreams, how what could you relate to either of the two male romantic leads, like the vampire or the best friend, at all? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not Please at all. tell us why. Um, the they what was were, really unrealistic about them. They, they were unrealistic in the fact that. I mean, I could I could relate to them in that I know guys who are like them. Okay. Um, they were very classic 
Um, you know that, that classic term, why is it women always go after the assholes? Yeah. They were them. Even the best you know? friend. Mm -hmm. Even the best friend was? Yeah, oh, yeah the best friend was, was the ultimate. Was he was, you know, he was there for her, but treated her like a sister, even though he knew she had feelings for him. Um, you know, basically didn't acknowledge her feelings and tell her that he didn't have feelings for her, but more, um, you know, recognized that she had them and then basically ignored them and continued treating her more like a sibling than anything else. Yep. Um, kept telling her about all of his wonderful wild adventures with all these women that he was with. You know, without really caring about the fact that she was hearing this and had her own feelings. Yeah, it was kind of douchey. Um, and then the vampire was so overly possessive, it was ridiculous. I mean, he was literally wanted to kill the best friend because he was jealous of the relationship, misinterpreting and jealous of the relationship that the two of them had. So... It was terrible on both fronts. Yeah, so like... neither of them were, like, so... I'm not that type of guy, and I've met those types of guys and generally don't like them as people. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to relate in that way. I couldn't relate to anyone. Like, oh, neither could I. The girl I, I was a no wimp. Real... Actually, no, that's not true. I did relate to one person. That was Morgana. I was going to say her. that. She, she was just generally a, a nasty, evil person. Who was Morgana? That's the stepmom or something. Or, the the godmother. Not the stepmom. It, I think she was, well, was she adopted or something by them, and that was the, the adoptive mother. She was godmother. Yeah. In in the demon whatever realm, or oh, in yeah, the human realm where, where she was having university? Yeah, she was the sorceress godmother, so she was the one who was helping Bettina discover her sorceress half, mm -hmm. and then her god, her godfather or whatever it was, was a demon and was, discover and was helping her discover a demon half, so. My husband delivered more wine. Lovely. Oh, what amazing. are you drinking? Me? Uh, yeah, I'm you. Drinking nothing. I'm drinking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I just had I a did, really bad work day. I had a bad work day, so. Ah. So, so what do you have? Uh, I had this beer, which was apricot beer. And then I switched. I finished this. So I text messaged my husband to bring me wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Yep. We've got some white Within the same house, them. right? We're in the same house, yeah. He his yeah. man cave is in the basement. In the basement. Okay. And I'm in upstairs. upstairs. So <laughs> my my ex and I used to play MMOs mm -hmm. from the same room, like literally back to back on two different computers from the same room. Mm -hmm. And we'd be playing as a team, you know, co you know, a cooperative team or whatever, and people would join and like, my God, you guys are so good together. It's like you're like right there and they're like, Yeah, it's because we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't how play are you communicating anything. like this. Um, by voice. <laughs> I can't play anything with him because he's too competitive. Uh, we tried to play a little bit the problem is I'm highly competitive, but I I'm also very terrible at games. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit of a sore point, but Anyway. Like, little Big Planet, he kept slapping me, and I couldn't figure out how to slap him back. Mm. I, I stopped playing with him, so we're good now. <laughs> it's you, 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 you kind of like take your analog stick and go, ba bam! Really I couldn't do it! I don't know why. Fast. I'm a gamer, too. I just couldn't get it. It took me a few tries to get it, and even then, I don't get it half the time. Right, sorry for going on a tangent from the. Oh, no worries. Okay. Um, how was the world building in. Shadows claim. One thing I gotta say I like was the description of the demon types. I think that was very creative. Like she had the serpentine demons and the uh, the lyke, which are the werewolf type demons, and she had all these different uh, types that were kind of stereotypical. But the way she described them was really good, and I appreciated that. And then a completely original, which was the I keep saying Grushlag. Grushla, because I'm thinking of Angel, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but it was Gru, Grula, it's the one that if you cut it, it's blood spawns child, babies? yeah, babies. So they're trying to figure out how to defeat it, but it's blood always creates more, so it's like a big conundrum then. It's kind of like a Hydra. Exactly, a Hydra, but in a really interesting way. I thought that was an original character. 
character. character. I don't know what Alex felt about it. Yeah, um, I I did like. Um, there was some of the world building I really did like. Um, I liked the the fact that she was descriptive enough in the the char- you know, in the, in in all the different characters and in in the world itself. Like you had a really good understanding of, you know, that she was in this tall, like this this giant spire in this massive castle overlooking this very foggy land, but yet she couldn't see anything because she didn't have any perception through the fog or any night vision at all and it was and all the important things always happened at night because of course there's vampires involved and there's all these different creatures involved that you know that generally only come out in the you know the night time and you know and hit and the vampires land is all this this dusk and you know fountains of blood and everything's very gray and like she you know like so she, you had a good understanding and like a good mental picture of where these events were happening my problem with it was that she took that description over to all the other scenes as well, which made it a little mm. bit hard to read at times. So, it wasn't quite as bad as, uh, what was that, uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone or whatever it was? Is that the one, the hospital one? I don't I didn't um, read that one, so it, pro- it could have been. I was going to ask the how, how the world building you know, actually compared to the Daughter of Smoke and Bone because she, in that, she was like that weird chimera thing compared to her being a half sorceress, half demon, right? So I was curious how that translated or, or you could compare that. Her it wasn't Daughter of Smoke and Bone then, it was the other one. It was the one I think it was, uh, it was at the same time, but it was oh. the adult, the, the more adult one, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway. I've been the, out of the loop for a while, sadly. Song of Scarabaeus? Huh? Was that the same time? Yeah, that was... No, no, no. That was a different week. No, that was a sci-fi month. month. That was the anyway, same month as Ghost no Planet. Um, but no, the, the world building was good. I just... Um, I had a hard time um, really enjoying the story part because it wasn't... I, I didn't... I felt it was, uh, in a way, a little bit too flat, a little bit too two-dimensional. Mm. And way too much about the sexy times, and not enough about the rest of the story. Agreed. I felt mm-hmm. so. the story was really, really thin. Then, yeah. And another thing that I kind of didn't understand was they added this whole part where she lived in the real world, like Earth. Like, shouldn't that have been like the main point of the story? Yeah, it's never mentioned. She never goes there. Wait, so no. she go, she goes there to university and she never goes there? No, she did, it's just mentioned like, in the past. Yeah. Is that? Okay, Sorry, go ahead, ahead, Alex. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say that the, the thing that bugged me the most about the book was chapter one, she's, you know, like, you know, as, as Nancy was saying, it starts off with you know, her being beaten to, you know, basically being beaten to death by these four creature, you know, these four these four demons or, you know, demon slayers or whatever it was, or sorcerer slayers or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it ends with her narrowly escaping death and losing her powers. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, awesome, this is going to be great because this is going to be either like some giant flashback of the events leading up to this and then how she gets past this and conquers it. Or it's going to be like this really cool, weird story where like the main character dies like right at the beginning, and then the rest of the story is, is around that, or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. And then chapter two is like a completely different story started up from that point, <laughs> and all it was was back to the vampire. And you're like, well, what happened to you know this really cool event? Like, where's the the rest of the story? Why why does this not have a purpose? In the you know why does this not have a a, a role in the rest of this book at all. You know, the only weird. role it really plays in the rest of the book is to explain why she's afraid to go out at night and why every every noise makes her jump and freak out and why she hides in her castle. See, what I, thought, what I thought you were going to say that it um, had anything to do with it at all was the fact that the book actually uses a lot of random modern language and slang. Because that was something that Dee kind of had a, a beef with when I talked to her at the park. I gotta say this thing about the prizes she was presented with. Okay. People are giving her these prizes, and she has to choose what she likes the most. Is something an MP3 player? 
<laughs> no. It's, Not quite that bad. It's tickets to Dead Mouse. Oh, that I think that's actually worse. It's so random because <laughs> like. If you think about it, as soon as like a few more years go by, people aren't going to know who that is. But what's even worse than that is you have to compare that to the other five things that were provided to her. Exactly. Uh, one of which was a massive chariot filled with gold. Mm -hmm. Another was these two beautiful horses. Another was the the four heads of the creatures that had tried to kill her. Yep. Um, the four. The head. Yeah, four the, heads no, no, the or four, four heads? heads. The heads okay. Four. 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 Yeah. Yeah, okay. The heads of the four <laughs> creatures that four are trying to kill her. <laughs> um, and I can't remember what the fifth one was, but it was like these... A phoenix. A phoenix. I okay, would go yeah, for a phoenix. phoenix. Right. So it was these, all these, these demon-y, you know, medieval, classic type gifts, and then... Dead, dead mouse, mouse which I call dead, dead mouse five, by the way, because that's how it's written. <laughs> yeah. um, it is how it's written. <laughs> and that, and they actually correct it in the book. Like he literally, the guy who presents, he's like dead mouse five, and she's like dead mouse. Yeah. And it's, it's literally to that degree. Like it's just. It was yeah. kind of ridiculous. Oh, no. Yeah. I was like, this is not necessary. Like because the book is ninety five percent fantasy, just keep it fantasy. The the real world didn't have a place. I found. Uh, it was unnecessary. And, so even that beginning opening where she almost died could have taken place in this original yes. fantasy world, you're saying? Exactly. The, the real world had no point. Yeah, because it was... Yeah, the only time it's ever referred to is the occasional times when she's talking to herself or doing the thought process thing or whatever, or when she's talking to her best friend who's also up in the real world with her at times and knows that aspect of her life, and that's the only time when modern language really comes in, mm -hmm. but it is thrown in randomly here and there because of that. And they're all and referencing adventures they've had off screen. Basically. The two yeah. of them, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah that exactly. would be really or, yeah. frustrating to read. Uh, not too bad, because I tend to skim through those types of things and ignore them. <laughs> Especially when I have no real love of the characters in the first place. If I don't have, you know, if I, if I'm attached to a character, and I, you know, and I really, you know, uh, you know, really connect with them, mm -hmm. and they suddenly do something that far out of context in a way of the rest of the book, then it's really frustrating and annoying. But when I don't connect, and it's just, I'm just kind of reading it to you know, read through it and get an understanding of it and say that I've read the book, then it really doesn't matter how bad or good it is, provided it's still a book I can read. It so, was readable. Yeah. It was just, it was kind of, it, it was kind of um, just funny in a way. Like, it was, it was an amusing read in a lot of ways. I just said that the opening was the best part. I thought that had yeah, so much potential. Saying, chapter one made it, made it seem like such an amazing book. And exactly. Then, then she wrote chapter two. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, I, I was a little disappointed, as I said, and I just I hate when females are taken that way and just kind of they have all this potential. And also, you have to start as a kick-ass warrior. You have, if you start beaten down, I like it better. Which is why I liked Elena from uh, Poison Study so much, because yes. she, she had a similar past of being bitten down, beaten down so badly, and then she just rose above it and became this awesome person. And I, yeah, that's that actually was... the only so, series uh, from Vaginal Fantasy that I finished was the the Poison Study, Magic Study, Fire Study. I finally finished Fire Study. I, yeah. I finally got my hands on it actually about a month ago. And I, I really liked it too, but I kind of had a problem with the ending. I felt like the ending felt rushed. Okay, actually I didn't finish Fire Study. Oh. Well, but, uh, <laughs> overall it's good and it answers, I feel it answers all the questions that people started having even in the first book. But like, like I said, like the last quarter or fifth of the book felt really, really rushed to me. We actually have a YouTube comment, a uh, question from Kara. She's asking, how did you all like Morgana? I liked Morgana a lot. She was the comedic relief and the female kick-ass person that I needed, even though she was kind of a jerk about it. I just needed some woman to be strong here, you know? It's vaginal fantasy. I feel like the biggest vaginal fantasy to be powerful. <laughs> the most powerful you think she would have been a better lead? Um, possibly not, because she's kind of a jerk. 
But oh, she's like the, very much a jerk. She's a very big jerk, but you like that as a side character. And she had strength, and I love this. She has a scene where she announces the competition. She's like, welcome to a Morgana Fest. And it's a competition for her goddaughter's hand. And she's like, Morgana Fest. And all the competitors are kind of looking at her weird. And she uses her power to make all of them kneel. She's like, now you'll learn, you know, next time you just kneel. And it was kind of a douche move. But uh, it made me awesome kind of applaud her. Mind. Yeah, it made yeah, me yeah, applaud yeah. her. And so, so Morgana, Morgana was a great, was character. great character. And I also, and I also really, liked really liked her outfits. outfits. I usually don't care. care. But they always, they described, they always described her, her with these giant, giant like, like headdresses, headdresses that couldn't, that couldn't fit through doors. doors. And I thought so it was like such like a Priyana poignant... Ella. Yeah, it was a great poignant visual of her with these headdresses that she couldn't fit through doors, and I always was, envisioned her like that, and it was amazing. Yeah, it was, apparently it was a classic sign of, of sorcerer, sorceresses, that they wore a lot of gold, a lot of jewelry, and they had this thing about wearing headdresses, and, and that type of, it was their, their classic signature outfit type thing, so even she would often wear, you know, even the, the, the main character Bikini would often be described as having, uh, as wearing these, these headdresses and these jewelry and she made a lot of, um, the one cool thing that the, that was, that was uh, remarked upon in the, some of the discussions was they described she, she was a, a master jewelry maker yeah, I like that. The, the main character, Bettina, was, and she would make these, these pieces for her collection but they all had yeah. weapons in them I've heard that. And and they were well described in like how these things would work to the point where you could almost draw out the design yourself and try and kind of make it in real life without, you know, minus the fact that without the magical ability actually being able to get these things to work correctly probably wouldn't work, but it was it was kind of neat in that way. Yeah, there's another reference I always liked whenever they said, "Oh, for gold's sake." That amused me every time. <laughs> I, I don't know if I even noticed that, honestly. I, I, I think I may have just skipped that. I skipped over that or not not really mm -hmm. paid attention to that part. It's like, oh my gold, or for gold's sake. Yeah, I liked the gold was their god. It, that was an amusing little thing she snuck in there. The one, the one thing they did which was really funny was uh, the way that Morgana got the, the people's love and then near the end of the book, the way Bettina got the people's love Mm -hmm. um, was by basically throwing massive orgies. <laughs> uh, not it, it was like not it was you know like we're having you know it was you know you know Morgana sets up festival night and it was you know like these basically nude female dancers and mm -hmm. unlimited alcohol and you know <laughs> the guys were just you know laughing it all up and having a great time and. You know, so it was food, alcohol, and basically naked women dancing around, and that's, you know, and that's how she got the love of the people during this massive event. It kind of sounds then, like, you know, she, she would be a good substitute for Dionysus. <laughs> yes, she'd be a very good Dionysus, but a little more and, uh, uh, harsh. Yeah, and then, you know, at, at the end of the book, when... Uh, when Bettina finally takes over rule of the area, um, you know she's seen as this um, as this unloved person because she's basically got you know she's she's got rule of the kingdom by herself. She doesn't have a husband on her, by her side at this point and everything else. And so she wins the people's love by doing basically the same thing, <laughs> night after night after night. So she's like, oh, I don't have a man to protect me. Let's just do the same thing that my mom did. Orgies yeah. for everyone. Yeah, it's pretty very much. perfume of her. And uh, yeah, and then everyone loves her. It's uh, it's pretty. Yeah, it's orgies, orgies tried, like, tested, and true. <laughs> hey, whatever works, right? The new uh, product of rule. <laughs> Maybe Prince Charles should try it. <laughs> Sorry, now we're doing like blasphemy here. I don't know. Uh, not really. <laughs> Well, one thing I guess we should point out, because it is Beaver Dreams, uh, very descriptive sexy times. Very. Yep. To the okay. point where Felicia commented it as, as being unnecessarily messy. <laughs> oh, so all the fluids are described then. There's a lot of fluids. Oh, very much so. There's a lot very of fluids. Very much so. 
Especially because it's scientific it's very, terms. Well, apparently in the demon world, it's notable when there's no fluids, because you only have fluids when you're with your bride or your mate. So fluids are a big emphasis of like, actual oh, this is love. A, yeah, this is important because you have fluids. <laughs> So they describe heavily and repeatedly. And she's always in shocked. In many ways. Yeah, so she's like, oh, fluid. Oh, look at that. She must be in love with everyone. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah like her, her best How? friend won't, doesn't, he whores around, but he never has fluid. Right. How, how many times does that come up in the book? come up or like, like how many different sexy times are there and are they all between the main character and the same person or are they between the main character Bettina and like a couple various people uh, the, at the point I am there's been three between Bettina and the vampire the, the main guy but I don't know where Alex there's, there's the the first one when he basically rapes her mm -hmm. then there's the time he okay. Then there's the time at the actual Colosseum thing when he like clubs them all in mist. But before that, there's the tent time. There's the tent time. So there's the. Have you? Oh, you haven't done. Haven't you read about the um, the the uh, picnic out in the forest? No, but continue. I'm about there, and I'm I will read it. I'm sorry that I okay, couldn't so finish it. That time. Um, there's one more time after that in her bed. I think that might be the same night, but later on. Mm -hmm. Um, it's about six or seven different times. Does she actually have sex with them eventually? Yeah, at the end of the uh, book, within like the last two chapters. Finally. finally. This is very long. In his home. So all those... First five or six times are not actual sex. Not actual sex. No, she has no, to be a virgin. No. She must. Yeah, she must remain a virgin until her wedding night. Wow. I know. I know. Oh, like, yeah, that's the other. In a thing world of bugged. demons, that really surprises me. I know. That's the like, thing that bugged the, me the most about this book. Mm -hmm. She is the prize for this giant, like, massive to the death. Colosseum battle royale thing, mm -hmm. as well as rule of the kingdom that she's that she's technically she's the princess for this kingdom, and it's as as her husband, the person who wins becomes king, becomes king of the kingdom and rules this 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 little backwater town. And the people who show up to battle, most of them have no interest in her as a bride and only want the power from ruling the kingdom, and they don't yep. care. But she must remain a virgin. How backwater is that? I know, oh, man. And that's yeah. that was what bugged me the most about the book because that's all introduced in like chapter three or four. Possibly no, I think that's actually initially talked about in chapter two. It's like I think I would be throwing friend. the book against the wall. <laughs> I would, but it's on my tablet. But I, it was entertaining, and I wanted to find out what happened. Yeah, no, it was definitely entertaining. It was just so. 1940s uh, women have no place in the world and have no power and can't defend themselves type I'm, book. I'm curious, who chose this one? Out of uh, the Kyla. Kyla. Really? Kyla? Kyla chose both of them. Really? Kyla's the one yes. who likes the historical romances the most, I think, right? I love historical romances. This so is not historical. Maybe No, but it's the, not. But, the but maybe that thing sort is, of sensibility is coming across. I don't know. The Kyla, interesting thing I found, though, mm -hmm. I have to mention this, is throughout the book, you have this very, this very, like, as I said, 1940s, possibly, like, even as bad as, like, 19th century style thinking about the way men and women work and, and all the dynamics there. And throughout the whole book, Bettina, the lead, the, the main female, keeps mentioning that the way demons work is very, basically, you know, is very puritanical and very classical and it's, you know, when they, you know, they have their own, you know, they have their own mm. ways and you can't go against their ways and they're very classic and they're thinking and everything else. And she keeps mentioning it throughout the book. 
So the author purposely wrote it that way and then wrote in a character who recognizes that it's that bad, but they never she never actually does anything to change it. Do you think do you think there's a chance she might in subsequent books? I have no idea. Um, I'm really not sure. I just it was just so funny to have it written so so sexist in, in uh, by a female writer and then have it pointed out throughout the whole book that it's written this way. I know, it, it really irked me, and I kind of also hate stories that even if it is redeemed by the third book, that's too late for me. I'm not going to go through two books of the simpering, powerless chick just to see that maybe she gets some some courage in the end. It's it's like Wizard of Oz drawn out times a billion. I don't, I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Or, or don't read Twilight. I've read Twilight. I uh, never have, never will. <laughs> I have. I read all four in two days because I was oh, on so vacation. Sorry. Yeah, a friend gave them to me and I was on vacation. And they were addictive, and especially because I just yeah, had the were. time. I had the time. So this, it's, it's, just, it's also, I, remember I, I got back from a four-month trip to Asia, so my work was really crazy. Uh, that's the only reason. I hate to go to a book club without having read the whole thing. I tried really hard. I actually, I went on the train with my friend, and she started to talk to me. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I'm reading. <laughs> I'm reading this really horrible book that I can't show you because I'm afraid you might laugh at me. I showed her a few scenes. I'm like, look at this. She's like, ah! That's so terrible. Are you reading porn? I'm like, no. Maybe. That was, that's <laughs> big, that was my biggest issue with it is it, I like romance books that are like the, the like romance romance. I don't like the romance books that are basically internet porn turned into a 400-page published book. I'm happy to hear you say that. That's very good from a male perspective. Yeah, yeah, that I'm makes me really happy too. Yeah, I, I'm very happy to see that, and it's I'm the same too. It's not the same if there's no relationship between the characters. And again, I said as I felt, it was a little rapey. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. There's the rapey. There's the lack of real. You know, like that. She get they get they they have an attraction at some point, kind of. It's not really stated so much as an attraction as it is that she can't seem to get him out of her mind and he's obsessed with her because she's got to be the one because of this whole bloodletting mm -hmm. Well, if you look at traditional vampires, because he's apparently this melodramatic traditional vampire, that could just very easily be like glamour or mind control on his part to her. Uh, and that, at one point I think she actually brings unsaid. that up. I think at one point she actually brings that up is, you know, uh, you know, am I attracted to him because I know that ultimately I'm going to be with him or am I actually attracted to him type mm -hmm. thing at one point in the book. Oh, it, no. It's it's kind of bad that way. But the other issue I have with it is just simply the description. Like, I like, it's one of the reasons why I like when it comes to the romance books, to, like the young adult. It gets to the point where they're, they're kissing, maybe a little bit of clothes falls off, and then it's the next morning. Yeah, you know? well, that's kind of like um, like how I feel sex should be on television. You kind of go back to like home improvement. You had yeah. you had Tim and Jill, and they would run to the bedroom and be all excited, and he'd be in boxers, and they'd get under the covers, and the scene would change. Yeah, and I'm okay with that. That's, that's great. Right. I thought it was like the maybe it's just the Canadian mentality. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Pro probably not. I'm sure there are people who would disagree. Oh no. You can't have the sexual stuff. <laughs> They're too nice. I, I'm good with a little more than that in my books, but on TV, that's all I want. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Actually, in, in this book, I would have been perfectly fine if it wasn't for the fact that they didn't really know or like each other, except for this apparent connection that's just faded. That bucks me. Yeah, the details, details still got to me. I just, I don't know, I, I'm... Or maybe it was just the the excessive use of slang terms when it came to the sexual details. That that so, really bugged me a lot. Oh, like you want to give us a couple examples if they're not too yeah. bad that we'll get banned? No ban. It, it, it's to that point. Like it's it's literally to the point where you could find it on some form of eighteen plus fiction writing website. Like, can I look it up on Urban Dictionary on my phone? I don't know if I want to. There's, okay, let me try to find something. I don't, maybe uh, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is find any of the sex scenes. Try chapter two. <laughs> <laughs> try like any chapter Wait, ever. Wait, the first, 
Chapter two, the first time he shows up, that's when he almost kind of oh, rapes her. Yes. He that, just like, what? He's, the he's, crap. Yeah, he's drawn I, to her. Actually, it might be chapter three. It might be chapter three. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Crap. No, no, it's chapter two. Okay. It is chapter two. Okay. So, so the detail, okay. The details of the, um, of the sex scenes and in general, and also the, um, uh, the other thing you said, Alex, aside, how did you find the writing style? It wasn't too bad. It was a very easy read. I mean, it was not, it was not, um, it was not l literature for the excuse of literature. Like, it was written for a purpose. It was, it was enjoyable. It wasn't, you know, fancy words and long sentences and rambling paragraphs. So that was nice. Um, I wouldn't put it in, in anywhere close to a high literature no, <laughs> uh, <funny>. state at all. <laughs> it was, um, but it was it was fun to read. Like it was <clears throat> it was descriptive enough that you knew what you were reading about. You could picture it in your mind without it being excessive. It wasn't you know five chapters to describe a chair or anything along those lines. Well, um, one thing that bugged me about her lack of creativity, she keeps referencing even though even with the people that aren't from Earth, she keeps referencing Earth sayings. Like uh, might maketh right, that was brought up many times, and I'm like, yeah. okay, this is like you're in a demon world. Come up with a different version of might maketh right. It bugged me that I kept bringing it up, and it wasn't by the girl who's been to Earth. It's Beheading more... equals betting. Yeah, like um, <laughs> she used. It was a few times. I'm sad I didn't write them down, but they kept using Earth slogans from people who had never been to Earth. Now, her other book, Poison Princess, was in first person and had a little bit of character switching. Did this one have that? Either of those things? It did randomly. I remember being annoyed by that because it would be from Bettina's point of view and then randomly it would turn to first person. Like, it was, it was actually third person usually. Like, Bettina was breathing deeply. The vampire was aroused by this. I can't wait to have her. I'm like... So it's switching people and tones, like first person, well, third person, within all the, the time. same like paragraph and chapter. Yes, within yeah. the same paragraph. Oh, that's and just chapter. terrible writing. That bugged that me a lot. Me I'm lot. like, I'm stick like, to either stick one purse or one tense. Yeah. That's why. That's why I said that this that I it would that I could easily see this being on some 18 plus <laughs> writing website because it was <clears throat> it was to that style. I mean, there's there's some people out there who write some erotic fiction, you know, and post it on websites that can put 400 pages together and create something with about equal amount of plot and detail that, you know, it it surprised me when I was told that she was a, a best-selling, you know, author and, yeah, it was just, it, it really surprised me. We had, um, actually, at the... Um, there was the the meetup after the Ottawa Comic Con. Yeah. Um, Lady I'm Shallow sorry, I couldn't I. go. Hmm? I was there, but I was I was sick, so actually I was dragged by my friends, and oh, okay. uh, I saw Felicia Day, and then I left. Yeah, she was awesome. And I was trying to actually see on Goodreads if anyone was there, but if you don't remember, the internet was terrible there. Not just terrible. Did you, you hear what the cost? It. Did you hear what the cost was for wireless? No. no, they they were they were charging for weekend access to the wireless uh, account for the the site two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Whoa. But just the three G wasn't working. Like even. Oh yeah, no, that's because there was twenty thousand people with cell phones in a small combined area, and I, I experienced lived... the same thing at Anime North. I had almost no reception most of the convention with my. It phone. was nuts, and like even we had the, about twenty two thousand people there. The vendors couldn't even get their. I bought a uh, a Minecraft mug for my husband, and the vendors couldn't get wireless on their credit card machines. Yeah, it was nuts. yeah, that was a, a common issue. Um, well, do you, do you know Blind Ferret at all? Blind Ferret, yes, from Montreal, yeah, they, the comic uh, book company. Yeah, yeah, they had a booth there. Yes. Oh, and I have another. I want a job sorry there. to cut you off. I have you another question there. from have Kara. Have you seen what they do there? It's yes. Crazy. Well, I was talking to them about some of the work, uh, some of the stuff that happens there. It was ridiculous. Well, they start to do it. I went their panel. They start. Oh, I wanted to, but again, I was sick. I left. But uh, oh, they I were. Went to their panel. It was hilarious. Oh, oh my god. Hilarious. I I want to see them so much, and they're starting to do an animated version of Least I Can Do, and they're three no, D. They, they do. Okay, because the three yep. D was horrible. 
and I'm like, I want to do your 3D. Hire me. But anyways, <laughs> no, I they um. Know. Anyways, no, the, um, they couldn't they couldn't get their credit card system working at all, so they really? had to do all cash. It it was driving them insane. There was a lineup um, for the ATMs. Five minutes away from where the convention was. Mm -hmm. um, and I have no cell reception in my basement most of the time. It's just the area is terrible. Uh, and then to have that many people in the building made it that much worse. So it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. hey, Montreal but, Comic Con, uh, no problem, just so you know. We got mm -hmm. the Wi Fi. Montreal Comic Con? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping. Yeah, I didn't I'm have any problem at Ozaku Con either. Mm -hmm. um, that's in September, right? It's in September, usually, yeah. Is Summer Glow supposed to be going because she missed yes. the Ottawa one? Oh, I was so mad, but she was really cute. Oh, was... did did you see her panel? Yeah, she was like, or I'm so did sorry. You see the panel when she called in? Yeah, it was very cute. That was the... By the way, um, Christine, if you're interested in seeing any of the panels, any of the major panels from the Ottawa Comic Con, one guy recorded them all on videotape and put them all up on YouTube. Wow. Oh, that's great. So, if you know the guy's channel, can you message it to me later? Yep, I can. That would be Felicia, awesome. Felicia Day was amazing. It's always good to see. Oh, I got delivery. Thank you. <laughs> wine. More wine. Yay. Um, so, so we actually have one more question from Kara on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, she, this is the last thing I think I'll, I'll, I'll say about this book, and then we can move on to Poison oh, yes. Princess. Sorry, we talked about this one so much. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so she, Kara says, was her virginity... Was her virginity only a thing because of the tournament? Because the demons seem to need to have sex in order to know who their mate is. But actually, the vampire didn't. Just the demons did. Um, only the male demons. Mm -hmm. It seems. So the female demons don't need to know who their mate is by having sex? I don't think they care or know. Um, it's like a male it, thing. It, it seemed, well, based it's on... It's like a very slanted world. Yeah, based on, on the understanding of what people were reading, and I didn't read into it too carefully, so I can't be 100% certain. I'm just going based on what people were writing on the message boards. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed that men had to have sex with every woman they met until <laughs> they found the one that that created, uh, A woman wrote created this. that, that A woman connection. Wrote this. This, this would... This would... Be incredibly exhausting, wouldn't it? Face palm moment, seriously. <laughs> no. Like, yeah. is it? Does it have to be the very first thing they do when they meet someone? No, no, no. But no. there is a reason why. They, they, it, it, it was. It was actually described in the book. It, it was. Uh, you know, she says something about sex being very important for demons, which was why. Oh, is it? There was. There was like, twelve pubs, but. 20 some odd uh, whorehouses in the town that she was governing or something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, so, so there's eight more hundred. whorehouses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was Not more quite whore... double as many, but nearly. <laughs> nearly. Uh, nearly. It was, it, there was more whorehouses than any other type of business in the town. So it was really bad. Did they just call the place Orgy Town? Oh wait, wait! No. I remember. I remember a line that really intrigued me. When the Caspian, who was the best friend, he went onto the ring. He had a lot of fans because he's a very good-looking guy. And he said, "So many ladies tossed their garters onto the cage that it became a covering of lace." I remember thinking that I'm like, well, "That's a lot of garters because garters yeah, are not big." <laughs> no, 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 they're not. It became a tent of lace. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, there was, it was pretty bad. And again, it would just seem to be very male dominant and male oriented, which I found extra surprising. Being a female mm -hmm. author, being picked by a female reader, and being a bestseller on top of that, like it just, I don't know, it was kind of weird. It's a seller on what list, though? That's the, uh, I guess that's the question. I think it was New York Times. Oh, New York Times. No. I know. Just well, she did have very good sexy times, but just again, it was lacking the everything around that. Mm. No good thing. And we continue on to the second book. Actually, I'm curious about it. The alt. Okay. I want to see if this is better. That's um, from what I heard from Dee. I don't know if she's watching us or Dee. If you're watching us already. 
say so in the YouTube comments, and I will resend an invite if you need another one. But um, yeah, no. Basically, D said that of the two books, she she much preferred it over over the main. Over the main. And me having only read it, uh, my general thoughts was that it, I thought it was really really good. Right off the top, I was interested in it. It kept my interest throughout the book. There was, there was a few things I was annoyed with, but it kept my interest throughout the book, and I would love to read the next book. Like I want, I went to my computer as soon as I finished to get the second book from the library and like put it on hold, only to find out on Goodreads that it's not coming out until October. Ah. So I yes. wanted to grab like the the second and third book and like start reading the rest of them right away because I enjoyed it that much. Why was this the Why alt this then? The Everyone's just it's better. Really, it's YA, and it didn't really have any sexy times. Nah. Yeah, it, the, the closest thing they have to the sexy times is um, they end up uh, making out in a pool together. And, yeah. And, and there's she the one kiss before wants, that. Yeah, she says she wants it to go further, and he decides that means sex, and she meant more kissing, and she freaks out, and that's the end of the sexy times. Yeah, I think he starts to take off his pants, and she's all like, what the crap? No! Yeah, pretty much. And then so he gets angry and storms off. And it's not yeah. for, like, many chapters later until she's like, oh, I just wanted more kisses. I liked what we were doing. Because she's 16, and I think he's 19. Oh, uh, 16? Yeah. That's a little young. I guess that would be... That's okay. They're basically the only two real people left in the world at that point, so... Oh, okay. Well, that's okay, then. <laughs> you know, well, also, they were in high school together. Um, maybe, maybe one of us should set the scene. Oh yes, sorry. Yes, that's a good thing. If I don't, I've never read this. So. I, I had it. I have to say, I had an issue with the book. I had an issue with that book as well. But I'll, I'll give a very, very brief one one line synopsis of what I thought. I mm -hmm. I wasn't one hundred percent happy with the book. I had a really hard time connecting with any of the characters, so I didn't enjoy it as much as I kind of would have liked to. Um, but basically it's a um, current world um, rich meets poor type romantic fantasy-ish thing where halfway through the book the world comes to this massive apocalypse event and it's so they... It's sooner than that. It's Less than a third of the way through the book, I would say. Okay, well, okay, about a, th a third or less of the way through the book, this massive apocalypse type event happens, and uh, it ends up being basically her and him on this uh, adventure to save their own lives and try and figure out how to, you know, save what's left of humanity if possible. Okay, okay, but there's there's more to it than that, Nancy. Okay, so, so as Alex said, it's a rich versus poor high school romance to start. Then it's set up on a post-apocalyptic background slash apocalypse background because it's kind of at the same time happening. And then on top of it, most of the characters have weird tarot card powers. Have what powers? Tarot card powers, and I know almost nothing about tarot. Like the wizard, or the or the the hangman. Yes, yes, exactly like that. At first, the only one you know of is her, because she's having weird flashbacks from her grand from when her grandmother kidnapped her when she was like five or six years old. Six, I think it was. I think it was six. Yeah. Kidnapped her? So, kid, yeah, kidnapped her to go get ice cream, and she showed her some tarot cards, and she was like, look through these. And so she saw the one of Death riding on a horse or whatever, and Death looked so sad she was kind of into him. And her grandma was angry that she had that kind of a reaction. And so the beginning of the book, she's just come back from uh, an insane asylum for teenagers where she had spent the last three months getting reprogrammed to forget everything her grandmother has taught her and to be normal. Because before she went, she started hearing voices. So she comes back to high school and she starts hearing voices again within a day or two. 
seems interesting, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot better, it's a lot better than, than Shadows Clan. Shadows Clan. Meaning, yes. like, yeah. rapist, rapist vampires Clan. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's kind of how it starts. And right away, there's, like, this new bridge in New Orleans uh, bridging the crappy Cajun area where it's all shanty town to the rich, rich, fancy mansion area where she goes to high school and lives. Mm -hmm. And so five new Cajun people come riding in on motorcycles, hollering at her ass when she's in the convertible, and have a class with her. And so everybody's kind of upset that these poor jerks show up at their school. And she's apparently usually the perfect princess, and she's so nice, and everybody loves her, and she's automatically rude to this guy instead of being nice. Which is weird for her, she says. And that's, that's the beginning, but it's not the beginning. So I understand, I guess, why the other one was chosen for Vaginal Fantasy's main, because, like, I guess one of the rules made after uh, Poison Study was that it had to include actual sexy times. Mm -hmm. But I kind of don't like that rule. But uh, I'm, intri I'm intrigued about this one. I have so many on my docket. But I will finish next month, which is... One of those elven books. Elven books? elven books? They look they look Yeah, we're doing an elven thing next month. Oh, the Fire Lord's Fire Lover. That one, it looks... I, I haven't read the description yet, but I like the look of the guy on the cover. The guy kind of scares me, actually. He looks a little too young, though. Yeah, he looks kind of like just, a chick. <laughs> just, no, that, that's uh, just, what elves are like, though. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> just, to, uh, just to add in, we were talking about an uh, award-winning author. Mm -hmm. uh, she has won... Two, four, six. Cresley eight, Cole, you mean? Eleven, yeah, eleven awards. Okay. Um, most of them uh, from the Romantic Times Magazine Readers' Choice Awards mm -hmm. uh, or nominees. Mm -hmm. um, the Pearl Award, the Barclay Gold Award, um, the Rita Award for Best Paranormal Romance. So. Yeah, so none of them, uh, none of them are from you know Times Magazine, but they are <laughs> magazine awards and, and such for writing and. It so. means she got some attention. So props to her. It's a very tough market nowadays. Yeah. Okay. So um, do we want to talk about the world building or the characters next, Alex? Uh, you pick. Let's. Let's do the characters first, because I have a feeling that maybe where some of your problems lie. Oh no, no, my problems lie everywhere. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> Let, let's do characters first. What did you think of Evie? I actually, I did not like any of the characters. <laughs> I really didn't connect with any of them. Um, the, she, I have to say she did the teenage thing well. Um, yep. They yep. were awkward, they were bad at communication, they were very stereotypical. Um, the problem I had with it was, it was mentioned actually last night on the National Fantasy, it just seemed like a very typical CW type TV show where... Yeah, I can see that. It was, you know... The rich girl was from the richest, uh, you know, from from you know the absolute richest, and it always had the you know the best of everything. And she was the head cheerleader and had the uh, you know quarterback boyfriend who had the Porsche, and everything was always wonderful. And she was you know the you know loved by everyone at school and had her clique group of friends. And you just kind of like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't really get into into that or into her until she was hearing voices and I found out she was crazy. And then I was like, good, <laughs> she actually has a flaw. Because before then, she felt very Mary Sue to me. Um, the problem I had with then, the whole voices thing. And then afterwards, thing. she became too weak, and that pissed me off. So she kind of yeah. wasn't a Mary Sue, I guess, in that way. Because she was both crazy or thought herself crazy, and then was also kind of a weak character. Yeah. The Seems other... to be this this author's vice. Like she likes these like beautiful women that have issues, but that's it. I'm like, that's not a big issue. 
Yeah, the other thing I had the whole hearing voices thing is I had already basically guessed that the whole hearing voices and seeing things was probably either some... I had not read the back of the book before. I never read the back of a book before I read a book. I just, you know, it gets recommended to me. I pick it up. I start reading from page one. And I keep going until I get to the last page, and then I close yeah, the book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that there was supposed to be this whole apocalypse thing going on in the book. Um so the you know the whole seeing things and and hearing voices and all that and she's like like you know these are just visions or nightmares I'm like no they're not um, I already know that they're either events that will happen or events that are happening in an alternate universe or something along those lines and you know like mm -hmm. it 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 so it was again like it was almost like not only is she you know the best at everything she's got a superpower that nobody else has like it. You know, it just yeah. is so. Yeah. And then, and then the whole apocalypse thing happens, and she becomes this. Uh, woe is me! I can't do anything, but I'm going to survive. How the hell haven't you died yet? Type character. <laughs> it's true. No, that's Aww. totally what happened with that. And um, for for me, I was able to connect with one character, and that was the leading man. I actually felt connection with him. What's his name? Really? I don't remember. I'm trying to Jack. see if I can find I'm it. I'm Jack for some it's reason. Funny. Yeah, yeah it was Jack or Jackson DeVoe. Even I was in, able in to Shadow's connect claim. I don't remember to his name. him. I could connect to him better than I could connect to her, for sure. And I understood like his point of view for the entire time. I had this discussion with Dee at the park, where basically like she thought he was kind of a jerk. Uh, to her the whole time and didn't understand why he was making choices he made. But meanwhile, I was reading the book and I totally saw him being completely faithful to her all the way. And just that he was just having, you know, teenager um, jealousy and stuff like that. And you know what I mean? Yep. So I found, I found his character very realistic and relatable. I found him realistic. Um... And I understood his his motivation as a character, and I understood you know how she was writing him, and it was very, uh, you know, very realistic to a point. But also, again, I had the problem of it being very stereotypical. You know, like it was, it was that whole you know the absolute worst of the stereotype poor world meets the absolute best of the stereotype rich world. And hey, let's put them together into a relationship. And I'm like, yeah, I think I've seen this on a very large number of after school specials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, and that was that was my issue with the characters. But yeah, um, if all of her books previously before this were like Shadows Claim, and this is her first book outside of that genre. Yeah. And then that was, I mean that's a good leap for her, right? Yeah. And that was my you know, and that was that was my issue with the characters. I didn't I I I liked him to a point. Um I, I I felt that you know he was a good uh, he was a good counterbalance to her. What was me? I can't do anything because he was you know he wasn't you know he, he he wasn't necessarily I can do anything, but he certainly was you know he showed his street smart his street smarts in a way that was relatively realistic to a point. Yeah. Still a little overdone at times, you know, where, oh, look, no electronics anywhere work, but I can get any engine to work within about 15 minutes. I just have to do this little thing. And you're like, well, well, it, well it, it, they did say that he learned that from somebody else. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's kind of one of those but, things where it's like, if that's the case, why aren't there a lot more motorized vehicles getting around? Like, no, it's, like, it's every true. Every vehicle it's in true. the world shuts down. But he can make anything work. Like, and I, I was wondering, like, as soon as she started cutting herself to make the vegetable garden, what? why didn't what? she just like start feeding everyone that way? You know, I, I'm a little. What happened there? Yeah, no, she's got this power. <laughs> oh yeah, she's, that line uh, got me. Like, what? Yeah, no, she's got yeah. this power where she can. Uh, she basically she controls. Uh, she controls life. Okay. Like sure. Or I would say she life. controls like plant life. Yeah. Yeah, vegetation type life. So trees, plants, whatever else. Mm -hmm. But the apocalypse wipes pretty much all plant life off the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. And she discovers accidentally at some point that if she bleeds on the ground, she can make plants grow. 
So, so she gets a like, bunch of seeds and like starts cutting herself routinely to make yeah, a vegetable to, garden. To create a vegetable garden. I guess um, that's what people would do. <laughs> but it's just but that's basically her superpower. She controls plants in a world that no longer has plants. Like do you, do you know anything about Taro cuz she was the empress? I know a bit about the cards because I had a Wiccan phase when I was really young, but it's been a while, so I don't know much about that. Yeah, I have no clue. Yeah, I, I have no clue either, which is, which is part of why I find the series pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm just, it's an interesting take on something that I've always only thought of for telling the future. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that these weird associations that are in the book were ever there. And maybe they weren't, and maybe Presley Cole just made them all up. But, yeah. Yeah. No, there's okay. okay. So I wanted to talk wanted to you about the beginning, about the Alex, beginning, because because uh, that, that first, first chapter, chapter slash prologue, prologue was completely was from a different from perspective. perspective. It was from that creepy, creepy <laughs> hermit guy, mm. and I was really into that. And I was like, this is going to be a fantastic book. And then it cut to her at high school, and I was like, okay, it's going to loop back around to the end. And it was totally right. Like she's good. It seems she's really good at beginning, but that's about it. <laughs> I don't think opening. I read the prologue. <laughs> you don't. You didn't read the prologue. Oh. I, I'm, I'm trying to think now, and I'm thinking, did I read that? I, I'm. I I've might got it. I've have, got it right here. But I might have just kind of disconnected it from the rest of the story. Like I remember reading. I remember reading about. <laughs> you have the book, man. The physical yeah, book. Yeah, I renewed it because it was due back at the library today, and I wanted to have it for tonight. So I'm just going to yeah, drop I, it back off tomorrow. <laughs> I don't remember if I read the uh, the prologue. Um, I think I might have, but I didn't kind of associate it with the rest. My issue was, I, it, like, I remember it kind of going with the whole, you know, high school girl heading off to school, and the bad boys slash poor boys showing up, and it was just, I was like, oh, it's it's going to no, be one of those. Because there's this creepy, creepy guy in the beginning, and he's all, like, beckoning her to the door, and he's like, come to me, and he's having all these thoughts, and he's like, I'm going to trap her, and he's, and yeah, he's going to yeah, drug her that. in the food. You did read yeah. it? Yeah, it was so it was so so creepy and great. And then she's like, <laughs> and then he's like, I'm gonna record you and talk. You, I want you to talk to me about what happened before the Flash. And like, so the Flash, I guess, is the thing that happened. Crazy, crazy neon lights in the air, kind of like the um, the Northern Lights. It was a giant solar flare. It was explained as a giant solar flare. Oh, that's right. That was explained like that later. Which. <sighs> Scientifically speaking, wouldn't do that. But anyway. Yeah, no, I, I agree yeah. with you, Alex. It seemed a little BSE to me. Yeah. Um, but, and then yeah, so it starts like 246 days after the apocalypse was how it started, and then it jumps to six days before. So the whole oh. time I was flicking, flip, flipping back and forth, and we're getting closer to the beginning, mm -hmm. to the prologue, I kept being like, okay, she's going to like meet up with the creepy guy now, right? And I would keep flipping to see how close I was to looping back to, back around. Yeah, see, I never paid attention to the dates. Oh, I was so <laughs> into that. I was like, how much more time is left? What's happening? Yeah, I, I, I don't pay nearly enough attention when I read, apparently, because that's all the little important details, like, you know, flashbacks and italics and dates. and. <laughs> People put emphasis into this. You have to pay attention. Sometimes. That's why I skip those things. <laughs> yeah, but those things are there for a reason. Sometimes. Um, Usually. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I, I didn't, the, the one character that I liked to a point was the, um, was the guy who kept calling, talking to her in her dreams and kept oh, telling her all the information. Uh, right up until he got trapped in the basement and suddenly became the whiny, wimpy character that couldn't do anything. <laughs> that was that was oh. Matthew, who was the fool card. Yeah, oh. he, was, he was this really cool character because he would like he would talk to her through dreams, like yeah, through what she considered her nightmares or visions he was giving her. So she would know what to do. Um, yeah, so she thought they were that she was seeing the future. Well, she thought that she was having nightmares. And then when and the flash happened, she thought she was seeing the future. 
And then at some point, she's having this conversation with Matthew because um, she's seeing this boy and she suddenly realizes that this boy is actually a real person. Well, she started and having conversations with him actually uh, the first time Jackson the class. Was, in, was in class with her and they were yeah. sitting and talking about their project. And when yeah, that but, first happened and she had the vision of the guy walking through the fire, I was like, oh, so he's one too. And I, I really wanted him to be one and I still do later in the series. I want Jackson to be a something. Like, he needs to be a something, or he needs to be the guy who kicks Death's ass for her because she's a wimp, and he becomes yeah. the new Death. Ah, oh, why is she a wimp? Uh, yeah, she's a bit of a wimp. She, she, she yeah. again, right, like, in the last couple of chapters, she suddenly comes into her power overnight, um, basically. Well, I think, basically, she finally decides to accept it and decides that she yeah. isn't crazy, or if she is crazy, the whole world is crazy, so fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's one of those kinds of scenarios. Plus, she's she's being drugged by a creep, and she can hear that people are downstairs, and she wants to save the other people as well. That's so, a good reason. But she, um, yeah, no, it, it actually, they both follow a fairly similar lead female kind of thing, Arch. where it's this... This person who's, you know, all up into herself, something tragic happens, becomes a giant wimp, and then the last 30 seconds of the book comes into their power unexpectedly and instantly, and then saves the day. Mm, do not like... Hmm? Oh, I do not like that formula. <laughs> but they both... The, the, the lead female seems to basically do follow the same role in both the books. Okay. Um... Now, nicely enough, Jackson is not the, quite the same chauvinist um, in this book as, as the, the vampire is in the other one. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it is a much more balanced world in that way. He's mm -hmm. still kind of playing the uh, I have to take care of you because you can't take care of yourself role, mm -hmm. but that's mostly because he's actually grown up in a world where, you know, before even before the flash happens, he's grown up in a world where you kind of do have to take care of yourself, and you do have to know how to be able to fight back, and you do and have he to be probably nice danger. Kill. And, you know, <laughs> that whereas she grew up in this very you know sheltered rich girl lifestyle where everything was handed to her, you know, without more, a problem. More on characters, um, I think I felt pretty much almost all the rest of the characters were mostly two D. Would you agree? And if not, which ones would you say stood up, stood above being two D characters? The only character, the only character that I thought had any dimension to him at all was JD. Like I didn't even feel that she had a dimension to her. Um, I did. I, as I, said, I guess I, crazy really is more of a quirk than a dimension. <laughs> um, I did like I did yes. like Matthew's character up until he got trapped in the basement and you know was drowning and was freaking out and they know, they so did I, explain that away later as him having autism though and just yeah but he was they didn't do that they didn't play that she didn't write that out very well because he was way yeah. too normal in the conversations with her. It's true. Uh, it's true. Right You're right. Like, there could have been hints earlier or. They could have dealt with it more. So yeah, um, you're right. So there was yeah. So that was a uh, you know. But I liked his character right up until that point. Like if she had continued him as a more normal-ish character who just happens to be a lot more knowledgeable about this this tarot card world than she was, and kind of played the mentor throughout the way he was up to that point, I think he would have been a much more enjoyable character in that way. But that's, you know, but JD, like, I, I like JD as a character, kind of, but he was still very stereotyped. Like, I found that, for the he most was, part... Yeah, he was pretty stereotypical. And that I, was my issue with most of the... I think he wasn't, though, in the fact that he actually did like her and wasn't a complete jerk, though. You know what I mean? And that he yeah. was... He didn't end up doing the things with Luna, I think her name was. Yeah. Oh, there's another girl? Yes. Yeah, there's a, there's another there's another girl. So when they're on the road, um, they come across this mansion that has a pool, and there's these zombie-like people called bagmen. Which was horrible. To water. 
So they're, they're basically zombies who drink blood instead of eat brains because they're just trying to get liquids. Oh, okay. Um, but it was a salt water pool and they're allergic to salt or something. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a trap by the hunter. She was the hunter card. Okay. And she surprised to see Jackson there and she makes a move or two on him. And then this is after the pool, not the pool makeout scene. That's when she shows up. Mm -hmm. So he gets really flirty with her, and Evie's all Evie's upset all about it. it. And they end up sleeping in the same room, and Evie's in a different room, so she doesn't know whether or not they did things together or not mm -hmm. for pretty much the rest of the book. Yeah. So, so I, I know I, I saw, know I saw on, on your Goodreads little mini review, Alex, that you didn't like the. Uh, the love triangle, but I don't feel that it was a triangle because I did see Jackson being faithful the whole time. And and it was a really thin, like it wasn't a triangle. If anything, it was more like a V or something. You know, I like that. It was. It the problem I had with it was it was still it was just so. It he didn't like he didn't expressly choose her. Once you know, once he had you know, once there was once the hunter showed up. I don't remember her name, but anyways, once the hunter showed I up. I think it was Luna. He kept kind of playing one off the other in a lot of ways. Like he, yeah. he didn't yeah. expressly choose Evie and say, you know, as nice as the offer is, you know, she's the one. You know, I I came here with her. She's the one I'm staying with. You know, there's you know there's something between us, and you know I I'm. I want to explore that before I even consider anyone else. Like it, it, it didn't. It was just, he just kind of played that. You know, I'm going to be a typical guy, not bother to talk about anything, and you know, just let the women, you know, act however okay, but they he, want. But he was 19. Yes. Or 18. So I mean, that's yeah. all excuse. When you were that age, how immature were you? Let's not go there. I had kids. <laughs> But, uh, I was I was I married at eighteen and already had a kid, so. Uh, well, I don't think your age is any reason to not be well developed. Like it doesn't matter. I, I I agree with you, but usually at that age, you're pretty immature still. Um, my problem was is that the, it was he was his role kept shifting. Like he would play the. You know, sometimes you'd think he was almost 30 dragging this kid around, and then other times he seemed like he was less mature than her, and he just kept kind of shifting. Like, it was really hard to really pinpoint down. I don't know, like, he, don't, he didn't always that, act the the same way in the same situation. That, that made somehow. sense to me, though, because... Yeah? Yeah, because I feel like, you know... Already he had a hard life. You saw him, you know, beating up his mom's boyfriend or whoever it was when he was treating his mom like shit. And then you and then you know he's already been through four or five months of the apocalypse, kind of on his own, joined up a military resistance sort of a thing, and was doing that for a while. But he is still like 18, 19 years old. So he's hardened, but he still has, you know, a bit of a childlike innocence inside there somewhere that when when he has the chance to relax, he's able to let it show. Is this the first this the in the first series? series? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Has anyone read any more? No, this is the Did one where uh, I was upset that, that there was no more yet. Okay. It's coming out in October. Okay. okay. So uh, it seems like this guy has a lot of room to develop. So I'm curious I would say about so. that. But I also hate, I also when, hate when, when series, when like series, one book, like doesn't one have book a beginning, middle, and end. I feel like this one did in that kind of circular path where the beginning was sort of almost the end and then it showed you how it got there and then goes a little bit past it. I don't mind those types of books, mm -hmm. but I felt that this one wasn't completely obvious about how that happened. Mm -hmm. I just... My big Maybe issue... because you weren't paying attention because it was pretty obvious. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, big, my big issue with the book 
from you know from my perspective of it was I'm reading about this typical high school fantasy thing with this girl who's having these visions and then all of a sudden the apocalypse comes and it's literally like from one chapter to the next and I'm like oh no they didn't just do that <laughs> and I, I was glad they did that awesome. because I would have been pissed off if, if it stayed in high school honestly oh yeah I, so would have I I wasn't I, enjoying that at all I wasn't enjoying that and like my problems with the book was we're trying to read and decipher those text messages between her and her best friend there was oh, some weird bother. symbol, and I didn't even know what it was. I couldn't even make out. Like, it was using really crappy talks, uh, text talk, like when it's like TLK for talk. and like. Uh, yeah, see, I don't do that. And, and I don't do that either. When I text, I write full sentences and words. Me too. Yeah. Proper yeah, grammar, proper punctuation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Occasionally, I will add a smiley or so. But they had something that I don't know if it was supposed to be a word or a really ugly smiley. And I had no idea what it was in this one sentence, and it annoyed the crap out of me. I didn't bother looking it up, but I did stare at it trying to figure it out for probably five minutes before I finally moved on. Yeah, I, I just... I, I just glance past those parts. Just the whole italics, details, I just skim past that type of thing. So, well, so that was one of the two, okay, go ahead. Well, I just I like to say with most novels, I expect that they should be writing them for them to be kind of timeless. So it bugs me when people add these too many like uh, modern day lingo that some people even in the present day may not understand. So that's what kind of bugs me about uh, Cressley Cole. Okay. Oh, oh, I found it. It's CP. I don't understand this. Yeah, it, the it, this, one. this one. This one. This one. This one. This one. Okay. It's a C dash. <laughs> it keeps going back to it Alex when I want to see. Because I know what a P is. A P is sticking out your tongue, but it's a capital C dash P. What the hell is that? Okay, I'm gonna type this just to see. Capital C dash capital P. Dash capital P. Uh, no idea. I just know that's my stepfather's company. He works for a Canadian Pacific. But I don't. That's what they meant. Can we check the Urban Dictionary? Oh, we can. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Sleepy. C dash. It's Did you nearly see sleepy. sleepy. How is that sleepy? sleepy. It's I a don't sleepy. know. Net lingo. C dash P. Online jargon, also known as text yeah. message or hand, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Comatose, maybe? Well, that makes sense if she, if, if, if at, right after what she says, about to pass out, TLK two tomorrow without a uh, W. No. no. Yeah. And then the other girl afterwards is like, but you never miss ANTM. America's Next Top Model. No. Yeah. Don't. Oh, it always bugs me when, like, they, they reference something too modern, too specifically. I, I'm actually writing a YA that I've been writing for a few years, and I kind of reference Xbox slash PlayStation 3. I don't make it clear which one it is. I'm just like, and you press the power button in the middle of the controller. That's fine. I actually approve of that. I'm writing stuff too. I imagine we all are. Yeah. We are very into books. But I just hate when they're very specific about the time and they make these really esoteric references. And oh, I've they... made some really esoteric references, though, in that. <laughs> but, like, like, specifically saying it's this movie by Stephen King. I guess if you say the whole thing, it's not a big deal. If you actually explain it. And then it... I went to explain some of it and a joke about it. And, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Well, I bring the example up just in the book we just read, uh, the Shadows one, is that she said she had dead mouse tickets. Yeah. Yes. He had to explain it was dead mouse, not dead five. That's a bit dead too specific. Five. It was too specific, especially in a fantasy world. Yeah. It, it didn't belong. Oh. But then again, I always bring up an example of where I loved the very specifics. One of the old books I liked when I was young, and I still really like the Princess Diary books. I don't know if anyone's read them. Okay, I haven't read them. I've only seen the first movie. They're nothing like the movies. The movies just took the concept and went on a complete tangent. Okay. But she she talks a lot about Buffy and she talks a lot about Final Fantasy and a lot of nerd culture. And so it was very specific, but I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, Ready Player One was also extremely specific, talking largely about 80s, 1980s video games and making a lot of references to the 80s, even though it's set uh, 
maybe about 20 to 50 years from our future. Really? Yes. Hmm. C CP, how is that? Sleepy. Sleepy, I have oh, no idea. Sleepy. But, but there's like no... CP. But you need the SL in yeah. front of it, right? I just didn't make any connection at all until CP. I thought it was supposed to be a face that I didn't understand, and I was like, what is this part on a face? The eyes falling down. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not get it, but that's what <laughs> says. An urban dictionary is law, as everyone knows. Um. <laughs> yeah. I recently learned what feels meant. Now I use oh. it all the time. Oh, when it when it hits you in the feels. Hits you in the feels. In the feels. I use See, it all the time that, now. That I picked up from just you know being around. <laughs> no, never heard that one. Oh, but there you go. You can say like, oh, if, you, if it makes you provoke, if it provokes strong emotions in you, you can say that hit me in the feels. That would require actually being hit with strong emotions. Oh. Being oh, a guy. You're a robot. Being a guy. Being a guy. That's not an excuse. I know very it emotional guys. It is an excuse. It's a perfectly reasonable excuse. You know what? The first person I heard say it was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he may have been a gay guy, but he was a guy. <laughs> That doesn't um, count. I was very happy to go to Ottawa <laughs> with my friend Jeremy, who's super straight but also super geeky. And when he saw Nathan Fillion and then Joel Strait come out, he cried. And he was just like, my feels, my feels. He was so happy. And I'm like, you're so cheesy, but good, to you, good for you. I'm so happy that you're happy. They, um, you, did you see the Saturday one? You were I, there for I, Saturday, right? I was just there Saturday morning, so I saw the okay. Firefly panel, which was very difficult. So I'm sorry to go on a tangent. This is my like experience of Ottawa Comic Con, which was quite oh, terrible. Gross. It was so terrible. No. Oh, what? D, what are you D, D is in the comments. I guess she's okay. watching us. Okay, yay. Hi, um, D. Hi. Um, so she said CP, like your like baby talk. So they're like, I'm CP. Oh, oh God. Isn't that That's awful? Terrible. That's horrible. That's no. terrible. Baby talk is the worst. Agreed. It's, it's one thing, oh. like, I, I hate when people call each other, it's really a prejudiced thing in mine, but I hate when any couples call each other babe. I, I really... My, okay, my brother mm -hmm. actually refers to his girlfriend in the third person when talking to her as babe or honey more actually most often honey he will literally and this is I, I'm not paraphrasing I am actually quoting would honey like some eggs for breakfast oh, oh no this is my like nasty goodbye. hands no sorry that's my thing like I have a bunch of friends who are like hey babe wanna do this and I'm like just they're right there just say Say their name. What's the big deal? Actually, I, I, jo I joked one time that I don't think he actually remembers her name, and that's how he gets away <laughs> with it. That's the way to do but it. Why the third person, though? That's really strange. Yeah, actually, third person. He I've done that once. To third person all the time. I've done that once with friends. Well, like friends of friends. They wanted to. Like, I was asking something. I'm like, "Hey, sweetie, can you pass me the potatoes?" Because I didn't know their name. That's just me. But luckily, I call everyone sweetie, so it works. Yeah, see, I um, I just, I don't remember names, but I just, I get around it, not by using terms like that, but I'm like, yeah, and, and just move on. <laughs> well, and I'm they'll fill it in, or they won't. Well, I'm excited if we have a good enough lineman up at Montreal. Maybe we can all get together. That would be cool. Um, do you know who's coming? I don't know yet. Usually they don't get a list until like a month before, but Summer Glow apparently, because she it's owes a, us, she owes us big. I was, um, I was uh, looking at it, and they have like the like half or more of the Battlestar Galactica cast, which is really? cool. Yeah. Um, and then they have the wrestlers, and I'm like, uh, I'm not so sure. I'm debating calling in a favor, which will be really awkward for me. Uh, a high school friend is in the sci-fi show sci *Being show. Human*. Okay. Oh, the American or the U.S.? Yeah. I mean, the I mean, the U.S. or the BBC? The Ameri the U.S. one, which is filmed in Montreal. I'm not sure if you know. I didn't know. That's pretty awesome. 
So a friend from high school that I don't really talk to anymore is in there, and I'm like, God, I we don't get along anymore, but I want to freaking... She knows I'm a nerd. She actually, when she, actually, when she got on the show, she emailed me. She's like, I'm in this new sci- sci-fi show you might like, and then everyone got obsessed with it. I'm like, damn. Yes, I do like it. I haven't seen any of the U.S. version. I, I love the BBC version. I and it was, a really, really, it was a really weird way that they ended season, series four, and I don't know if there's a series five or not. <laughs> I don't know, but apparently it's gone on. And it was terrible because she actually wasn't that nice to some of my other friends in high school. So it, she was doing this thing at Comic-Con and a big panel, and someone's was like, we should go see her. I'm like, I'm like oh, it might be awkward, you know, we don't. It's weird. And she's like, yeah, we should go up in the line and say, hey, are you still a bitch? I'm like, oh, that's oh, mean. That's a little too mean. Yeah. That wouldn't be me because she actually wasn't a bitch to me, but she was a bitch to some of my friends. But that's, anyway. that's yeah, you can't, I, I don't know. Ah, yeah, that's not. That's unfortunate. But I would like to say hi if she's around. Although it was kind of funny um, watching Nathan Fillion call Jewel State a bitch. Uh, Nathan Fillion, he's, oh, he's so sh- cocky, but in a really nice way. It's really awkward. It's like, God, you're such a a, a manly kind of chauvinistic guy. That reminds me of my first crush back in grade school. Well, how so? Just, just he was that same kind of attitude, right? Like he was the he was a class clown, maybe not the class clown, and he was super egotistical and cocky about himself. And he and he knew it, and everybody fell over him anyway, and. <laughs> He was still, he was still nice, nice to people. To it was so he's actually the main character of the young adult book. I'm well, not young adult. young adult. The uh, uh, the youth the book youth I'm writing. Oh, well, based, based it on real life. Because no, it's not. It's not because I started the book that happens after it um, when I was twelve and still really, really crushing hard on this guy. So he was the romantic lead, but not the main character. And I've done a prequel book that I'm working on now, where he's the main character instead. So I'd, love to, yeah, I'd love to talk about this in a separate form, because okay, I, write, I write too. I'm very yeah, popular on fanfiction, but that's fanfiction. So. My, my adventures in writing are not published um, in, in anywhere, um, but I, I am actually working on some writing myself. I'd love to do that. I guess it's not proper in this forum, but uh, elsewhere, I'd love to discuss that. Because yeah, I say, yeah. like, having a writing... Group really helps. It it really does. Like whenever I whenever it's NaNoWriMo time, excuse me. Whenever it's NaNoWriMo time, like I am, you know, that really does help me, and I I get a lot farther than any other time of the year. I work a lot harder. Mm-hmm. It's true. I debate going back into courses just to have an excuse to finish stuff, but it's uh, house well, mortgage. Meh. Uh, the um, have you guys looked at the vlogs? There's a, a writing vlog now that they're putting on really? Geek Sundry. I've watched the first of a couple of them, and the writing vlog was one of the ones that I started watching. Um, and I think I'm going to keep up with the writing one and the Jeff Lewis one. Oh, I love Jeff Lewis. Yeah, his is kind of funny. He talks about, like, farting and cheese, and uh-huh. it's kind I've been of ridiculous. So, I've been so out of loops since I got back from Asia. I've been back for about uh, you know, uh, five weeks now, and I just... Work has been killing me because they actually expect me to just make up the three months I was gone. What? And it's, Crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like not even like oh, okay, continue. It's like okay, this is the work that's piled up. Just do it all. Okay. And, and you're, um, that's never do do cool work. Eh, anyway. <laughs> this is a good new session. But yeah, this book. Uh, to I want to summarize my thoughts. I think Presley Cole is a very good sensual writer. I just wish she worked more on her characters so that her her sexual parts had more oomph, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To bring it back to Poison Princess, I've just looked up on Wikipedia tarot cards. Mm-hmm. So, so other characters that we may see, the, the major arcana are apparently 22 cards. So there's 22, I guess, high school age people that are going to be fighting to the death. Oh. Until only one remains. This is something that comes up towards the end. That not only is there this apocalypse, but anyone who's one of these has to fight until only one is left standing. 
Wow. Oh. Am I am I right, Alex, or am I misremembering yes. that? No, no, that's correct. Yeah, no. When that came up, I was like, really, really, well, they have to fight each other to the death too. It's well. But there's good cards and bad cards. To the death, I can't. It's. They definitely are choosing sides. I can't remember if it's the until one side wins or until one character wins. I can't okay. remember, but they're yeah. definitely choosing sides. Like there are groups working together against other groups. But I think that's like a temporary survivor sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, I, only I can't one remember. Lives. Yeah, I can't remember because because I think at one point, uh, as Matthew says, choose your choose your. Um, Oh, is it choose your right? Uh, choose your um, your friends carefully, or something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, he says that more than once. But also, Matthew references that he asked that death to be killed last. Um, Why? And and then later, death tells him that you won't be killed last anymore. And that happened when Matthew takes uh, when Matthew takes. Evie to a present battle between three or four of the people and death and death's weird giant demon thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, Satan, basically. Yeah, it looked like, I would figure sort of Satan, but I don't know which... Think, think Diablo. Oh, no, it's the devil. It is the devil. Okay, yeah. so these are, these are the cards in the Major Arcana. Uh, the Magician, the High Priestess, the Empress, which was Evie, the Emperor, the Hierophant, and the Magician did show up, and he was, he, he was a Magician. No. And, and I thought he had the most interesting powers. Was he the Magician or the Illusionist? Uh, there is no the Illusionist in, in this, yeah, but I, but in like, this list, I'm so he remember. was, the Illusionist is the Magician. Yeah, I remember if he, he played, he was played more, he was written up more as an Illusionist than a Magician. I think, in a way, because he was like, you know, convincing bad guys to fight against each other. And... Yeah, he did. He did that, but he also became invisible, which could be an illusion or could be actual magic. He was able to escape from any bonds, like an escape artist kind of magician. Yeah. So, so I guess I... it's kind of a combination of anything, everything. Yeah, yeah, that's what I feel like. Okay, so then there's the emperor. I have no idea who that is. We haven't met them yet. The hierophant. I don't even know what that means. Uh, I heard I'm clicking on it. Um, uh, in some decks, named the, the Pope. Hmm? In some decks, he's named the Pope. Yeah, yeah, no. they're the, um, they're the uh, religious obsessed. So there's a religious fanatic Pope uh, that will show up later. The okay. Lovers, the Chariot. Them. So I don't know if the Lovers are going to be two people or one person. That's going to be strange. Um, <laughs> the Chariot, Strength, the Hermit, which was the creepy guy at the beginning of the book. Wheel of Wheel Fortune. Fortune. Don't know how that's going to be a person. Uh, yeah. Justice, the hanged man, death, temperance, the devil, the tower. The tower showed up already. I'm trying to remember who the tower was. Was that one of the ones that was in that that flashback or that, that, I think um, so. that death thing? I think so. In the killed? flash the flash sideways, I want to call it. Yeah. In the in this one picture of the tower, it has a crazy lightning bolt hitting the tower. So maybe it's the, the lightning bolt guy. Yeah. Because there's some teenager who's like eyes on the skies and he throws lightning bolts. Is that a cat? Yeah, he invaded. Cat. He invaded me. He does this. He just kind of jumps. I can't do anything. Then we have the star, moon, and sun. Judgment. Who is different from justice for whatever reason? The world and the fool. I thought we already met the fool. Yeah, we, we, didn't we did. Meet the fool. But I, but we also I met just a went hunter, the which wasn't listed. Yeah, no, the the hunter was the moon. Matthew okay. kept saying that she was the moon, and her name was something like Luna, but it wasn't actually Luna. And then they kept calling her Luna, but that wasn't yeah. her name. I just have a weird thing to point out. Sorry to interrupt, but I can't find the most recent Vaginal Fantasy. Yeah, no, it's I not there. It's off? Banned. It was cut? I think it's because it got banned because of the too much descriptive sex. Oh, my That's God. That's what Alex was saying. I know, but I didn't believe it actually. Like, I might have happened live, but I couldn't believe it actually isn't here. Yeah, no, they, the link to it on the website goes to a non-existent video. Oh, 
my god. And um, there was a post, I can't remember if it was on Twitter or if it was on the groups or something, where uh, the Geek, yeah, Geek and Sundry, I think it's on the Geek and Sundry Twitter, where it was said that uh, the that YouTube lost the video, the, the video from last night. Oh and I'm, I'm wondering if it was lost or lost. <laughs> lost. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's terrible. No. I, 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 you know what? I wish... Uh, Felicia, if you see this, if you ever happen to look at this, I would love for you to redo it on your own channel so we can watch it. She should. I, I would love to read this one. I haven't actually been part for, like, four months. So, oh, that's I'm very sad. To watch this interview we're done tonight, so I'm actually kind of kind of sad to hear that. Well, pretty pretty sad. Um, it would actually be. Um, I know it's being recorded to YouTube directly, but it would be kind of nice if. Um, who is it? Is it uh, Vicky? I think who manages Geek and Sundry. Yeah. For them. I think, I think she, she's the one who normally does the broadcast and puts up the uh, the Vaginal Fantasy logo in that, so she has one, uh, she has a channel in there. It'd be nice if she was actually recording the whole thing directly while they were uh, doing it, so it could be edited or reposted. I doubt it, though. Yeah, you kind of trust the internet. It's terrible, but... Don't it? No, never trust the internet. Never trust it. I'm so depressed about that. Ah, I bet it was a really entertaining conversation. Oh, was it ever? And I don't know if I don't know if either of you noticed that you guys have watched the last couple. Uh, I don't remember if I watched the ghost, the ghost planet one or not. One of them, Felicia, was in New York during it. And yeah. There, there was one before that. The last couple that I watched, Felicia seems to be kind of um, almost out of it, like like. Like there, but not necessarily participating as much, and certainly not smiling she's, or laughing quite as often. She's, she's, she's tired. tired, just distracted and stressed out. Yeah, I think that's I think, why she had to stop doing her vlog too, because she's just working too hard with the channel. And yeah, so there was that, but I think there was also partly the fact that she was trying to kind of police it a little bit to try and keep it on topic and and maybe try and keep the conversation at least semi clean a little it's bit impossible. And she didn't she didn't do that at all this time like she she seemed to be right in there and she was having a lot of fun with it which was kind of nice well that's good that's good, that's good. so i'm, I'm really upset that. that i can't see it now me too and yeah, no, it was um, quite a lot of fun did you cast this at all or either of them alex or did no, either of you I, cast I, I have a really hard time with the casting thing the closest the i got to uh -huh. The closest I got to was um, you guys are both uh, you guys have both watched Buffy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Having read it right around the time of the uh, like having finished the first no the was it the first no the second book I had just finished the alt book just um, as the uh, just as as the Comic Con started mm -hmm. I kind of had. He, I kind of had uh, JD in in um, um, Poison Princess cast as um, uh, is it Nicholas Brendan or whatever from Buffy? Oh yeah. really? Okay. Like, I young could, Nicholas I could Brendan. See that. Young yeah. Nicholas Brendan. Yeah. So like, yeah, I so like Buffy that. Nicholas Brendan. Okay. For for me, I actually did cast this one for the first time ever. While I was reading it, I did not at all like the girl on the front cover. Oh yeah. I thought uh, I thought she didn't fit. So instead, I recast I recast her as um, a cross between Hayden Panettiere from the first season of Heroes with a what I would imagine a young Kaylee Cuoco to look like. Kaylee Cuoco is from Big Bang Theory. Oh, okay. okay. There you go. Sorry. No, yeah, I don't watch Big Bang Theory, but I did watch Heroes. Uh, you're talking about the cheerleader, right? So you have the yeah, cheerleader yeah. That's right. That's exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. It's appropriate because she's yeah, cheerleader. Yeah, that's actually uh, thinking about it. That's kind of who I cast as well for her. Like every time they refer to her as as cheerleader, that's kind of who I thought yeah. of. And then uh, for the guy, I actually cast the guy on the cover. Mm -hmm. Okay. But with oh. but while reading it, hearing the voice of Remy LeBeau, aka Gambit, from the yes. nineteen the early nineteen nineties X Men cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course. 
So I would often just add share to the end yes. of every sentence. Yeah, was, I would, I would hear it in my mind, but I wasn't reading it. And, and then all of a sudden it would drop and like he wouldn't sound that Cajun, but then when it had the more Cajun-y sentences, it was totally would come back. It was, I feel like oh. the dialect was a little, was inconsistent. How, just out of curiosity, how's your French, Christine? My French is pretty good. I actually okay. was kind of upset that some of the easier things were translated. Oh, there's okay. French in this book? I'm, a, I'm yeah. assuming, Nancy, that your French is pretty decent being in Montreal. Yes, it has to be. Okay. Like, um, I knew that some things were different than the way she was translating them. My French was, is that good. It was funny because during the cast last night, um, all four of them were like, man, I wish we could speak French so we understood this stuff better. And uh, I was sitting there going, uh-huh, uh, sure. Get a Canadian, <laughs> man, come on. And, and it was just really funny because I was sure there was at least a few Canadians watching. I wasn't following the, the comments at that point because it was late and I was, uh, I was on a very small screen laptop. Um, but uh, I was, I'm sure there was a few Canadians and they're going, I'll translate, get me yeah. on there, I'll translate. <laughs> Yeah. Because yeah, I certainly like, like, my French is fairly poor now, but it was better, and there was most of that was fairly easily read and understood. So yeah, yeah, same here. Like I haven't had a French class or really used French in over ten years, but like I took it all the way through high school. Yeah. So I'm rusty, but like it was primarily easy enough French that I didn't need to look anything up. And then when it was a slightly harder French, they were saying that it had a different Cajun meaning anyway and translating it right afterwards. So I had no problem. I'm a weird combo because I'm actually born in Toronto, as people may know. I lived there into my teens, mm -hmm. and I moved here about uh, six years ago. So I was terrified. Oh, I was terrible, I was terrible French, French, but I recently had to learn it, so I'm okay now. And my my husband is French, so okay. I have to. Okay. Well, that's a good reason to get good at it. <laughs> well, he speaks, well, he speaks English, English French perfectly, perfectly well, but my mother-in-law is like, like my grandchildren will speak French, French. right? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Of go. course. <laughs> Long in the person. future. Yeah. Well, I was I'm trying to find some French, and I just saw him calling her Belle Fee. <laughs> that's, but that's like the only thing on this page. Yeah, no, it was just funny to have him say, well, I wish we could speak French. I'm like, yeah, I understood it fine. What was your problem? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> oh, I'm sad I missed the French. Oh. Yeah, well, then, then read it, because besides her being pretty weak, as a character, it's a good book. I know. I just have so many other good books to read that I'm like, why I read a, an okay book? Yeah. I don't know. I'm very picky about the books I read. I read a lot, read a but lot. good books only. Right? That's a cute cat. Yeah, yeah, it's Max. You can do anything to him. Oh, those are the best. Uh, yeah, look, look, I can hold him this for like five minutes. Doesn't care. Yeah, Your I cat. see that. That's a very passive cat. He's a very passive cat. Yeah. He, he was, he's, he's from the streets. From the streets. So. Look, look, check him out on the motorcycle. Oh, there's a motorcycle. There's yeah, oh, yeah, there's a lot of motorcycle references in there. Uh, I don't know why. I guess it's like a sexy symbol, but not to me. It's Actually, he explains it as uh, it was the only thing he could afford. Because he okay. comes from a very poor part of town, so he couldn't afford a car, so he bought a motorcycle. Yeah, I think there were like flattened trash cans nailed to his roof <laughs> to be like tin roofing. I yeah. think that was described. Yeah. I do. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's described more as a, a way of living, and it's the only means of transportation he had more than, hey, look, I'm sexy, I'm driving a motorcycle. Okay. okay. I, can, I can understand that. As long as there's a reason. So, so it's not yeah. that bad. And her jock boyfriend had a Mustang convertible. No, he had a Porsche. Oh, you're no, you're right. It was a Porsche. In yeah. the post a convertible in a Porsche. Porsche. In a post-apocalyptic world. More expensive. No, no, no. no that was before. That was before okay. that. Yeah, he died. Oh, okay. Because I was like, that's a pretty fancy thing to have in a post-apocalyptic world. No, they didn't have that. Okay. I think way later they have a cube van. Yeah. 
Yeah, they have a cube van. They go through a couple of different motorcycles. They have uh, like a truck or a car. No, they have a, like the Mercedes, the mom's Mercedes at one point. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they, they, they end up going through a large number of vehicles. And is anyone like an expert at these vehicles? Like the guy is. Guys? He becomes the expert of everything. Okay. Okay. So he's the weapons expert. He's the vehicle expert. He's the I can find food anywhere. Look, it's got. There's going to be food right there. Oh, hey, look, there's food there. There's going to be gas in that vehicle. Hey, look, there's gas in there. Oh, yeah. convenient. Yeah. It's a bit convenient. Who chose the the recent uh, pick of Picks? the month? Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. Cause, yeah, because the it was cut off episode. before you found out, Alex. No, no, no. They they explained the picks. They just didn't explain who picked them. Ah, oh, that's terrible. I wonder if it's somewhere on the forum. Like it was kind of uh, we're doing elves this month, and yeah. that was basically as much as it was explained. So I'm not sure if it's a theme. This is what they decided on, or if it's a Felicia pick, or what it is. But maybe it's a Veronica pick. I think they were saying that she was going to do a pick next. Yeah, it might be. And she did I say she was the sword and sword and laser, so I could see it being hers. Okay. It's so sad. Actually, I really like Felicia's picks the best so far. They're usually a little more innocent, but they yeah, have... no, she is. She's read. She's read a lot of the not so innocent stuff, but it's not the stuff she wants to discuss. It mm -hmm. seems because she always seems to pick the slightly more innocent things. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, but have you ever okay. seen her? Have you ever seen her book count? No, I haven't. No, it's what is it? It's disgusting. Hold on, let me see if I can I can find it real quick. It is. Yeah, I can do it. I, I, it's gone up guaranteed from before, but last time I checked, I just I'm bringing it up now. Well, in most people's defense, I don't write every book I've read on Goodreads. Well, me neither. Like, I it's too much work. I okay. tried to she has pull up one time. I have 170 books. I okay. think I, I have 57, 57. And that's probably just probably this year. This year. <laughs> okay. You have 57? That's all I have on Goodreads. Okay, I have because... 200, I have like 200, uh, 200 books or something like that on uh, total on Goodreads, and I think that's everything okay. I've ever read in my entire life. I, I have 170, that. and I'm sure I'm missing minimum 50. Yeah, I, I, I read a lot, and this is probably me in the last two years. Okay. But, like, yeah. there's a lot of old books that I don't have up that I need to put up. What I really like she about has Goodreads, oh, she over 800 ratings. Oh my for gosh. Books on Goodreads. Oh my goodness. Last she year has, I read 26 books. According she to has Goodreads. read like close to a thousand books. That's that's a lot oh, of books. Man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, a book I just want to say to go off vaginal fantasy, which I'm really sad about. I read this book that was very recommended to me called Shadow and Bone. Has anyone heard of it? Shadow and Bone? Yeah, it's like the new Twilight Hunger Games, apparently. and uh, But apparently better written because it's a more original world. And, uh, uh, it's not Smoke and Bone? No, it's Shadow and Bone. It's not, so it's not Daughter of Smoke and Bone? It's not Daughter of Smoke and Bone. No, it's Shadow oh. and Bone. No, don't know that one. Me neither. Okay, well, I'm not going to discuss that much then, but it was it was recommended to me by Goodreads because they're like, oh, you like all these YA uh, fantasy books that are really popular, and they recommended this to me, and I was very disappointed in it. So if Goodreads ever recommends it to you, uh, interesting world, interesting characters. It was, it's weird because it was fantasy Russia, which was kind of different. But uh, then again, characters that were kind of bleh. Oh. So, anyway, very sad about that. Sorry, I thought it. I Goodreads is like this is the next big thing, so I thought it was a big thing, but apparently not. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Right. I finished. I think. So, what are people reading these days? I'm, as I said earlier, reading the final, uh, the final Sarantha Jacks book, which the first okay. was Grim Space. So this one is called Endgame. I want to okay. see if I can get up the picture. Go, picture, go. Um, I will save my place. Bookmark, bookmark. Okay, and then navigation. See if I can see a cover. Nice and big. Go back. Ah, oh, there's too many acknowledgements. 
Usually how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Let's Come on. on. I know it's by Anna Guire. <laughs> And the title, and her other books, and then praise for the other books. I'm going backwards from chapter one. Are you on a, an e-reader? I'm on my cell phone. Oh. <laughs> so this is this is Endgame, the okay. final book. Uh, what That's series? What I'm, the Sarantha Jack series, series is what I'm currently okay. reading. Mm -hmm. I'm a weird person that I have uh, regular romance, comedy, and fantasy, and regular romance, and pure fantasy going on at the same time. Okay. So, so I'm actually reading about six books at the same time. I used to read about three books at the same time until I joined this book club, and now I kind of just read one and try to power through it as fast as I can to get to other ones. I try to do that, yeah. But I, I, actually, that's was my problem with that. I downloaded this book. Uh, for, for this book club about two weeks ago, and I'm like, I'm going to power through it. I read a book in every two weeks. That's easy. But I was attracted to my other series. And actually, I couldn't sleep two nights ago, two nights ago and I read an entire book. Which book? Uh, it's this kind of comedy detective series. It's called uh, The Spellman Files. And I really, really liked it. So I read it all one night because I couldn't sleep. I'm like, oh, I couldn't sleep. I should have read my vaginal fantasy book. But, <laughs> no, that would have put you to sleep. Uh, maybe, yeah. probably. <laughs> or you'll have overly fluid, descriptive dreams. <laughs> yeah, I want to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't want to do that. But yeah, I, that's what I like about Goodreads is that I can keep track of what I'm reading. Like a series I'm really enjoying, but I keep putting down is the Mistborn series. If anyone's heard of that, I've heard of it. I haven't read it yet. My husband and two of my friends love it. They're obsessed with it. And there's actually a series beyond, a spinoff now that they all started reading. But even though I think it's brilliant, I can't get past the first one. It's very complex. It's very deep. And every time I read a full chapter, I'm like, I want to go something lighter. And I keep going. I have that problem with The Wheel of Time. I can never really get through the first book. So I, I couldn't either. It's so sad. Keeps, and everyone keeps yeah. talking about how amazing the series is and how wonderful a story it is and how developed it is. And I'm like, yeah, but I can't read it. So. Yeah, neither could I, Alex. And I couldn't get behind Rand. Like, yeah. and it just, uh, I just did not like Rand. I really liked the beginning when it was the prologue and it was all crazy dragon power nonsense. Yeah. And then it cuts to Rand and he's just like walking in a desert. And I, I think I stopped reading it when he finally left the tavern, and he's like walking through some crazy sandstorm, and that was when I finally was like, no, I'm done. <laughs> it's so sad because you appreciate it for what it is, but you're just like, I'm not interested. That's, yeah. I think that, that's worse than what I feel about the books we were reading today. It's like, they were bad in some respects, but because they were action-filled, you kept, you kept your interest. Yeah, you, you were able to enjoy them while you were reading them, even if they're maybe not the best literary material. Exactly. So these ones that are very good, but just too slow. And that's that's the sad fate of the reading industry nowadays. Yeah, that would definitely be my problem with Wheel of Time. And like and I've heard how many different millions of characters there are and like that it keeps going around and like I've gotten some pretty decent Cole's notes from one of my friends who has read them all, and I really enjoy the Cole's notes from her. And I like the idea of the world and everything. I can't read the books. Um, I was, um, I, I know a couple of people who actually have read the books and you know have got, have gone through them, and they were talking about how there are web pages dedicated to basically describing where each character is in the world at the beginning and end of every book so that yeah, like as you pick up the next line. book you can remind yourself what's been going on with the characters so that you're not suddenly surprised when they say well so and so is here and you're like oh yeah that's right because he did this and that and okay now I, I'm thinking that's if you just have how to, complex it is yeah if you have to like keep written notes of what's going on with the characters <laughs> in the book there's that's just way too much work to read a book. 
Like, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially for a series that's so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's what, 13 or 14 books or something total? I think it's more like 15 or 16 and now. And like 1,000 pages each there's, or something? There are at least, I think the, the smallest is 600, and I think the newest book um, that was the second book by the second author was over 1,200 pages, if I remember correctly, when my roommates, my ex-roommates had them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, see, that's a little excessive. Like, I don't need to read a 1,200-page book. Yeah, no. no. Well, I wanted to give a mini shout out to a fellow Vaginal Fantasy member who actually kind of she encouraged me to read her independent book, and I read the first few pages, and it was actually very good. And it's a Vaginal Fantasy member called Kimberly Chapman, and she has this book called Finding Gaia, and I only read half of it, but it was amazing. Cool. cool. And I sadly, I just, I think she was just offering it as a preview, and, and I, haven't I haven't been encouraged, encouraged to, to buy the whole buy thing, the whole Sam, thing. which I'm very sad about because I really want to support uh, independent publishers, mm-hmm. and I will eventually. <laughs> but it was great it was character, character build, build and building and great feminism, feminism. and I want to just, just put her book put out her there. Book out there. Was that Kimberly Chapman or Chapman? Chapman. Okay. And she's on Vaginal Fantasy. So just for a little shout out to her. Nice. I can actually type her. I can. I'll put her. Or I'll put her. Thing. Sorry, I'm echoing. So I feel like I have a slur. Alex, what? Uh, are if anything else, are you reading currently? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just working on the next uh, the next book in uh, the Vaginal Fantasy series, so the the Fire Lord's Lover, I guess. I'm trying to pick between the two of them. I think that's the one I'm going to be starting with. I I ran out of books, I guess, about a week ago, and then I've been focusing on my writing, or at least the the story building for my writing, more than the actual reading. So the last mm-hmm. ten days or so. So. Um, what do you, do you want to give uh, maybe like a quick summary of like what we know of those two books so we can choose I don't really know much besides what's on the reads so I'll just uh, I'll see if I can bring up okay so the fire lord's lover is the main uh, in a magical land ruled by ruthless elven lords the fire lord's son dominic rakes plays a deadly game to conceal his growing might from his malevolent uh, father until his arranged bride awakens in him passions he thought he had buried forever. Uh, Lady Cassandra has been raised in outward purity and innocence while secretly being trained Ah. as an assassin. Her mission is to bring down the elven lord and his champion's son. But when she gets to court, she discovers that nothing is what it seems, least of all the man she'd married. Uh, but beneath the gilded castle lies an unspeakable evil, greater than either Dominic or Cassandra had ever fathomed, and without each other, they may not survive. So that's the main. Hmm, that seems kind of typical for a plot. I hate the innocent damsel lady, but she was trained as an assassin. Maybe she'll surprise me. I'm going to... Oh. Um, the alt is called Lord of the Fading Lands. Uh, once he had scorched the world, once he had driven back overwhelming darkness, once he had loved with such passion, his name was legend. Tyrion's soul. Long ago, in the magical holocaust known as the Mage Wars, the immortal Fae and their allies uh, fought to defeat the grasping evil of the elven mages and their dark gifted supporters. During those wars, a fit of grief-induced madness caused by the death of his mate, Fae Shapeshifter Rain Terran's soul nearly destroyed the world in a blaze of Terran fire. Now, a thousand years later, a new threat calls him from the fading lands back into the world that had cost him so dearly. Now an ancient familiar evil is regaining its strength, and a new voice beckons him, more compelling, more seductive, more maddening than ever, any before. As the power of his most bitter enemy grows, the ancient alliances crumble, and the wildness in his blood will not be denied. The Terran must claim his true mate and embrace the destiny woven for him in the midst of time. That seems really long. 
<laughs> yeah, I feel like they tried to give us all the backstory yeah. for the first chunk of that. Oh, I'm kind of not really interested in either, but I think the main sounds a little more interesting than the other one. Yeah, the main seems more interesting to me. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, just I'm looking through to see if they have like a page count or anything like that. I usually check the <laughs> ratings count. Yeah, nice. yeah. Um, Lord of the Fading Lands says it's 402 pages and it has a 4.15 rating on Goodreads. Okay. Yeah. Whereas the Fire Lord's Lover, as the page is loading... Oh, there it is. 378 um, pages. 378, so it's shorter, and it has and a worse 3. rate. 3.71. Exactly. Ah. Uh. But interestingly, Felicia rated the main better than the alt. Really? Yeah, she highlighted really twice. I yeah. really, really liked this book. So we're three. We can vote. <laughs> Um, so... Um, well, you normally tend to side with Felicia, right? I do side Felicia. And, and I feel along the same lines as her in regards to sexy times, usually. Yeah, it's like, it's not maybe good not, unless it's... Maybe not so much in plot, because I'm not sure if I completely was on board with some of her previous picks. I wasn't into Ill Wind. I didn't like I Ill Wind. I loved that one. Really? I yeah. had a problem with Purple Velvet. Yes! Oh, we Purple all did. Velvet was we wrong. All did. That was just silly and why, and I, I didn't like that she was so obsessed with fashion. That yeah, was something that continued him. to annoy me throughout all the books. Mm -hmm. I liked her obsession with the cars and naming the cars. I didn't like her obsession with fashion. <laughs> Bad fashion. <laughs> no, oh, it has to be bad. Um, Weird, typical fashion, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Okay. I'm, I'm going to recommend the main. Mm-hmm. For one reason and one reason only. I'm looking at Felicia's review of it. Mm -hmm. And on the alt, she says, I really like this book for some inexplicable, inexplicable reason. The main protagonist was really innocent, sometimes irritatingly so. <laughs> oh, no. And that's on the alt. So I'm thinking the main is probably better. Okay. I, I vote yeah. for the main. And she says that for the main, she says the ending is the only thing I thought was weird, but considering she's setting up a series, I'll cut her some slack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she oh. also has this, she also has a statement where it says, uh, and I loved how elves weren't all delicate and nice. Some were they were kind, kind of bastards. Of bastards. <laughs> yeah, so, I kind of like that. So I'm let's read that one. I'm probably going to be a better book. Okay. Yeah. So, so Catherine Kennedy, Catherine with a Y. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Fire Lord's Lover. The Fire Lord's Lover. Okay. Yeah. And Great. It's book one of the series. Okay, one last thing. I'm actually curious. I downloaded Master of Crows back in the day. Oh, I downloaded the preview of Master of Crows back it was, in the day. It was very and I cheap. Never read it. Yeah, exactly. It was very cheap. I think it was like three dollars for the whole book. And I'm debating whether it's worth reading. And I was just wondering if anyone actually read it. No, I did not. <laughs> Okay. I, I, I had intended to, but I never got around to the whole downloading it and all of that, so it never happened. Okay, yeah, I have the my... first 30 page, I think I, I think I have the first 30 pages as a sample. I got that, and I've never bothered to read it because it was only able to read uh, with a specific program at my computer. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was just curious. It's something that's lingering on my tablet, and I'm like, uh... lingering on my tablet. From what I remember of that month, I think people generally liked the sexy times, but not so much the story. Oh, okay. Um, just as a mention, if ever you do get an ebook of some form, digital download of some form that you're unable to read on a tablet or a, a book reader, mm -hmm. there's this wonderfully free program called Caliber. Mm -hmm. Which is hard to calibrate. <laughs> which allows you, if you do it in generic form, to actually convert anything you want to EPUB. Oh, really? Or, or yes. to PDF as well. Yes. But yeah. it'll actually convert a PDF to EPUB, which is kind of nice. Yep. Um, so that you, so, and since EPUB is re read by basically everything, Mm -hmm. You're generally okay. Except for my e-reader, which is why Except I use my e phone now. <laughs> yeah, I have yeah. a BlackBerry. I kind of hate it. Oh, really? 
It was a present. Was a present. So I can't. I can't. Is it, it a Z10 lake. or is it an older Blackberry? I don't know. I just got it. So it's pretty oh, cool. you have the playbook. That's how. That's exactly how I do all my reading. High five! Yay! <laughs> um, what program are you using? I'm using Kobu. Okay. See, I downloaded. There's actually a program called EPUB Reader. Really? Yes. Okay. Completely free. Remembers where you were in the last book you're in every book that you've read. Kobo so does, that too. It, hmm? Kobo does that too. Kobo does that too. So if you close it down, open up something else that remembers where you were. Mm -hmm. um, really convenient in that it automatically sets it to land to your 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 landscape or whatever your portrait mode, regardless mm -hmm. of how it's set up, which is kind of nice. Downside to it though is. Um, it doesn't always open EPUBs properly, so sometimes the pictures get loaded up as chapters and then the words get loaded up as a separate chapter. <laughs> so when I downloaded... Um, oh, that's strange. That is strange. Yeah. When I got the um, Cthulhu Erotica book, mm -hmm. it was oh, okay. short, short story, picture, short story, picture, short story, picture. So like it constantly had these breaks of... Uh, of yeah, uh, of these uh, short of these oh, pictures geez. randomly between the short stories. So it was kind of anyway, but yeah, that's how I do my reading. Yeah, Barry, because it came actually. The deal he got was with the keyboard, and it's oh. actually it's actually how I write on the train. Okay. So it helps me for my writing because my system used to be Microsoft Word documents through Dropbox that synced with my phone and my computer at work. But you okay. can't actually do any edits on your iPhone. So with this, uh, I can do edits. Uh, well, you I see, either that's use why pen and paper or uh, OneNote on my computer. That's, that's why you get uh, uh, a Microsoft phone that has Office built right into it. Ah, and nice. then it syncs directly to the SkyDrive. Which and then you can use OneNote tablet. with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, have no, one I don't note. have. I don't have any kind of note thing on my Android at all. It didn't come with any kind of like note writing app. Not even like a super basic one to like leave really? a sentence for myself. No, not that I could figure out anyway, or no, that I've noticed. Not that I could figure out anyway. But it did have a uh, Polaris did Office, have which I use to read office, most of my PDFs. Mm -hmm. So I have so some I have like some role playing books in here and a couple other PDFs and then um, and then for books I read with OverDrive which is how I download my library ebooks huh. and so I've got library ebooks and then also ePubs that D has been fantastic enough to send me as well. Is D from so, Ottawa too? She's from Toronto. Ah. Um, Toronto, yes, sorry, Toronto. Yeah, we've had we've had a, a couple Toronto hangouts. The first was just Dee and myself, and the second happened last week. And uh, I got my friend Julie to come along and join us, and she's signed up to the Vaginal Fantasy Forums now, and oh, is going to start reading. Yay. Books. I'm so I, sorry, I, I, I got a convert. Oh, by the way, uh, based on last night's episode, uh, Felicia announced that we're over 9,000 subscribed on Vaginal Fantasy now. Oh, wow. Nice. So. We've that's fluctuated good. between one and three viewers this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's better than our usual one. Yay. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, maybe we'll grow. It's only episode six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll make a better effort to show up, maybe. Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> I'm back in Canada. It'll happen. Maybe we can all right, one day. Yeah, all right. We can so, let's, whole thing. so let's read Lord of Fire. Okay, we're going to read Lord of Fire. Sounds good. Uh, on that note, um, I think it's time to say goodnight, everybody. It's 1130, yes. and we've been doing this for a little over two hours. <laughs> yes, I didn't expect that. Nice. But it, I thought you were having fun, eh? Yeah, for sure. Exactly. It's, it's great seeing you both again, and I can't wait to do this again. Definitely. Definitely, yes. Till next month. Bye, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night.